This video is sponsored by Death Trick Double Blind, a non-linear detective visual novel coming March 14th to Steam and Nintendo Switch. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Windbreaker Podcast, episode number 14 for Monday, March 11th, 2024. I'm Marty Sleva, once again joined by Frost and Jamate and producer Eric behind the scenes. Uh, as a reminder, Yahtzee and the Adventures Night crew are uh, still out in our nation's capital. Uh, They're filming the remainder of season four. And also, if you guys didn't see, we launched a Kickstarter for the Adventures Night card game. Launched it Saturday evening. Already hit the goal. We're about to triple the goal. Uh, but there's all sorts of uh, there's all sorts of great uh, sort of stretch goals there. So uh, if you haven't checked out the Kickstarter, uh, play as your favorite Adventures Night character in a uh, drinking game to to out drink the others and leave them on the floor of the Adventures Nightclub. Uh, lots of cool stuff there. So thank you to everyone who's already supported that, and thank you to everyone who supports us on Patreon and obviously via super chats. We're gonna get to those in the back half of the episode. Uh, but we got a goodie for you guys today. I'm glad Jamate's here because I know Jamate has a lot of thoughts on this. Um, this started our our topic started as a uh, kind of a reaction I saw to. Uh, so Helldivers came out a few weeks ago and was, uh, I feel like universally, uh, beloved. And it was immediately one of those games where it's like, this is how you do a live service. This is how you do it. You don't do it like Suicide Squad. You do it like this. And eventually I was like, well, the, the table's going to turn on this. Like something bad's going to happen. And sure enough, a few days ago, we got, um, sort of a, a, a minor wrinkle in this where, uh, the, the Arrowhead Studios released a, uh, patch, which, uh, obviously had some balance changes, uh, nerfed some popular weapons. Fans got mad at that and expressed their anger. And then an artist for the studio sort of, uh, responded to them a little cheekily and pretty much said that like, Oh, it's not that it's got nerfed. It's just like, you kind of got filtered. Like you're just not, you're just not good enough. Like plenty of people are still clearing this. Uh, fans got mad at that. And then the, uh, studio head and creative director had to come in and sort of apologize for the tone and say, that's not a respectful way to talk to the audience. And so this just, got me thinking about the larger topic of our relationship, not even our relationship as like as, as creators or as press or whatever, but just our relationship as players with the people who make these things. Like, what do they owe us? What do we them? Like, where are these lines? Like, these lines are always shifting. Like, what 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 sort of feedback needs to be taken from us, if any, in an art form like this? So I know that's a, that's a big thing, and we can kind of... We can kind of jump into it wherever you guys want. I'm excited. Everything. Yeah. Every, every, everything. Every, everything. All right. What did you, I guess, right at the start, what did you think about this? Uh, my, I would, I would just call this a minor kerf, kerfuffle. Kerfuffle? Uh, kerfuffle? That's not a minor kerfuffle. It's, it's just, you know, somebody working in the industry gets a little, gets a little riled up and they could have used a little more PR training, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all thinking it. We're just looking for the correct way to word it, that you'd put that in a suitable email. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, it has come to our attention that your skill differential might be the cause of your issues, but we will work on that instead of just like, get good, bitch. Yeah. Uh, which is the kind of tone that you, you sort of take, you know? But then who's, whose fault is it? Whose fault isn't it? To me, I think we just, we skip the actual discussion and we go straight to like, oh, you suck at this game. Like it just ends right there. My brother in Christ, you're, you're the developer. Right. <laughs> who's your who's your target audience? I wish there were a label that very specifically like these are the structures, these are the commandments, this is what the game's always gonna be. Because I find live service to be too um hard to write off. It's hard to say this isn't for me because they're trying to reach so many people, you know. 
So what, what, what are you going to do there? But on the topic yeah. of this one, I think what it was the nerfing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I started that, dis or I, I went into it on Twitter as well of saying like, I don't understand PVE balance. I don't, I don't get it. How do, how do you guys feel about that? Jay, you, you know, your balance, Marty, you play single player games. Do you, do you, how do you feel about PVE balance, even though it is an online structure? Yeah, I think it's justified. I, I, I do understand it. I guess in a game that is built for, uh, this is a live service, right? So the rate at which how fast the community clears the content and um, how they interact with it does matter over time, especially considering it's uh, multiplayer. The the aspect with Helldive is, is that a huge aspect of it is that you can kill each other. And if there's a gun, like... There was one, I can't remember what it's called. It's like the Tesla coil gun. It's like the a arc real gun. Or something. Oh, the arc thingy. Yeah. It's horrific. And if you're anywhere near an enemy, it will bounce to you and will kill you instantly. And um, let's say that gun is horrifically overpowered in this instance. Therefore, a lot of people are using it, which means there's a lot more, um, not just accidental team killing, but it's like rampant. That does have a big impact on how a lot of players who aren't using those weapons perceive the game. Sure, um, sure. So tweaking those things doesn't make the game that much harder for people who use those weapons. Well, I guess it does because it was easy before. Um, but it does improve things for everyone else. It brings all players onto this kind of level playing field. The developers are trying to get all the weapons to basically doing the same amount of damage each. Right. You just distribute it in a different way. Um, and that's a very difficult task, and sometimes they need to make these changes, and I think they're, they're completely justified in doing that. Um, I agree yeah. in the chaining, because uh, I do think, uh, um, for the board, what do developers owe us? The least amount of frustrations possible, right? Mm. Obviously, you can't eliminate all of them, but I'll take the yellow paint. I will take the, uh, if, if the chain lightning is starting to uh, be annoying for the players to the detriment of their fun, absolutely. But whenever it's stuff like, oh, this gun was outperforming, I'd rather see buffs to everything mm. else or changes to everything else instead of just like, oh, this was just doing too well. You know? Yeah. You think of it this way, though. Do So if a gun is outperforming others, do you buff all other weapons? But then in that case, you'll have to buff the enemies to because the overall power level of all of the weapons is going up. You have to bring the enemies up slightly because otherwise the game just automatically gets a lot easier. So they'd have to double buff all of the weapons and enemies rather than just nerfing two or three weapons that are outperforming the others. I can see I can see both. I do agree, you know, there there are multiple routes to, well, to balance. Why would you need to uh, why would you need to buff the enemies if it's one of those things where like the the balance is really good with these certain weapons mm. and then the other weapons no one's using because they don't feel like they're working as well why would bringing those weapons up to the caliber of the weapons that are being used not be enough Th that's genuine curiosity i'm just yeah, like no, no yeah it yeah. depends on the extreme you're in right yeah so um i'm not too into like i i love hell divers and i play it a lot but i'm not so entrenched in it that i know the individual weapon balance but mm -hmm. let's say the arc thrower weapon this isn't the case, but let's just be hypothetical. Say it's stupidly overpowered, and it's really, really good. And because of that, nobody else is using the remainder of the weapons um, that could be used, none of the stratagems. There's two possibilities. We can either nerf the arc thrower, which will piss a lot of people off. Yeah. Or we can buff the weapons that aren't being used mm -hmm. and bring them up to the power level of the arc thrower. Well, in that instance, it depends on how powerful the arc thrower is, right? If the yeah. arc thrower is one-shotting most enemies and taking down you know heavy armored enemies when it shouldn't be buffing everything else makes the game that difficulty if, if you were using the arc throw if that makes any sense no so it yeah. all depends on the power level of the thing um whether you should buff other things or you should nerf the individual thing it just depends on how it's performing yeah and that's always you know i don't know like what is the game that has the best balance in terms of like, are, is there a game where it's like, oh man, every fucking weapon is viable? I guess that's like fighting games. Well, I guess even fighting games has its kind of tiered like competitive <laughs> no, characters no game and everything. Yeah, well, yeah, no game can be completely. It was like Overwatch, like when Overwatch was beloved and before everyone turned on Overwatch, which I guess could be another <laughs> piece of this yeah, puzzle. Well, like Overwatch felt like yeah. it was relatively balanced, right? Like, 
Well, uh, spoken like a man who didn't play. Spoken, yeah, no, that's I am. I, 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 I said this in my um, Mario Kart video. I I don't think people love games because they're balanced. I think people love them yeah, because yeah. they're not. Yeah. Um, the, my theory, as far as any games being balanced, is uh, any game that be, that acknowledges it's not balanced but gives you a chance to be on the imbalanced side. That's closer to balance. Like um, CS:GO, super, super famous, super competitive. The ba the maps are not balanced in in a proper like 50-50 chance of winning kind of way. It's more like um, on offense you have a 20-80% chance of winning, but then you get to be on offense. Yeah. You know, so you'll swap. It's like football, right? Um, sure. That that new what was it? That new overtime rule that they put in where like both teams touch the ball now instead yeah, of just like yeah. you know one one in that way. Acknowledging yeah, well, that coin toss obviously has a, a an advantage. Yeah. Exactly. So like acknowledging that you have no balance and essentially just kind of giving others their turn, I guess is 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 the way I go for it. When it comes to balancing these games, though, um, I mean, again, you you both have have way more experience in in live service games. I mean, for us, you have like distinct live service experience in stuff like smite like sort of being a part of a community you had a voice that could probably be listened to ostensibly right like by people who changes my question is like what at what point is listening to the fans who are vocal uh at, at what point does it go from being like a, a positive to wait should we be listening to this vocal minority because <laughs> yeah. they don't represent like what they want from the game is probably way different than what the random schmucks who aren't saying anything yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's zoom out so I can, I, we can hit the title topic then in that yeah. case people um i love humans <laughs> they're my favorite species <laughs> better than dogs I'll I'll take, out of here. you know a uh, hot take there they are great at at um giving you a sort of a, a feel of how they feel they're great for that they're not the best at wording how they feel and they're horrible at telling you what to do so you can sort of just use them as this vocal uh, way of gauging you know, the temperature so to speak of people but um you also have to take into account like the silent majority if people are satisfied with your game they won't talk they won't say anything. Mm -hmm. they'll be playing your game so yep. you have to understand that most of the outcry is just from it's always essentially going to be churning unhappy players and so the responsibility i think is like you should listen at the very least but definitely don't don't act on everything and i i think like that, what's so interesting about this space is that humans are a puzzle so to speak and if they're like oh this feels so bad because it does too much damage and everything else doesn't right then it's like okay we have to look into that and not just like hey buff nerf because I, I think if we're going into live service it is like the food service and part of that's hospitality so it is a space where you are being heard you are being listened to they are trying to accommodate you but customer is not always right i think what I'd like, and this is something that most won't bring up, is what do I want out of a developer? I want a little spine. I want a little, this is what my game is. I'm sorry if this isn't what you want. They even posted that that one uh, Twitter thing where I said a game for everyone is a game for no one. Mm -hmm. Right. But so that that's why it kind of was a little antithetical to me of like, all right, well, now I'm going to have to balance the gun we, though we, we're gonna have to put the mittens you know? back on because we, yeah, we might yeah, have yeah. said something mean to a someone who was antagonizing one of our developers over and over just, oh god just don't say anything and just get away from the twitters yeah yeah but, uh, yeah. yeah no so li listen listen to the peoples but don't uh, i think yeah so solve their issues but just try to get away from their words yeah try trying to get, yeah. from, get away from it's, all that kind of stuff i think a lot of it's perception right so I have a friend who works at Riot and we chat all the time and they worked on the balance team. Uh, they no longer work for the balance team, but they did. And um, there was a character that was extremely overpowered uh, to play in in the meta. And what they did was um, in the next patch, they horrifically nerfed that character into the ground so that they wouldn't be dominating the scene. So after they implemented this patch, the the play rate of that character dropped by 50 percent their win rate went down by like 12 percent which doesn't sound like a lot but is a lot in moba um and ev everyone was complaining they feel so weak they feel terrible everything is bad um but it turns out they forgot to actually implement the nerfs they oh. just said they did them oh Imagine. placebo nerfs yeah, yeah, so no. it's placebo. Yeah. It's it's how you perceive things, and a lot of players will see nerfs like, oh, 
you know, a 10% debuff to this weapon in Helldivers and think, yeah, this weapon is unplayable. Like, this is garbage. They've broken the game. But really, and this is where it comes back to that tweet, and I don't fully agree with that tweet, but part of it is, you know, a lot of it's on you, right? Like, you've got to play a certain way. You've got to perceive it a certain way. Rather than thinking, because these numbers were decreased, the thing I liked is dead, right? It's a lot of it's on your end. They're almost like the the concierge, you know, of the of the hotel in that sort of way, because your know, perception is king. Uh, yeah. We reached a point in Smite where it was essentially like no game is perfectly balanced, but this was really really good, and so like you could play almost any character in so many different ways. But and then it's like okay, now all we have to do is just input more content. But people almost nowadays, especially in live service, they want change. Yeah, they want that sort of maintenance. So it's interesting to see some of these newer live service games have um, a very active uh, someone in charge of actively changing the changing the layout. Hell Divers Two, if you want stuff happening instead of just stuff to do, they have a guy named Joel who is the dungeon master, and he's the one that's like pulling all the strings and the levers and and giving you that sort of change up in gameplay. It's like, as you are conquering more of this world, more content, more enemies, different types are spawning because Joel's like, all right, it's time to change this everlasting story. So, Tanks, uh, not tanks, uh, mechs are the perfect example of that. Like how they introduced mechs into the game was masterfully done as a live service. So like the overarching war that is, you know, this war mode that's constantly going with Helldivers, players knew because they were in game that ta- uh, not tanks, mechs existed in game, but they didn't know how they were getting to get them, and they thought, oh, they'll patch them into the game whenever, right? Really, really hotly anticipated thing. And then randomly, in game, they were like, oh, the um, the automatons are on the planet where we make the mechs go liberate this planet, and they didn't say you'd get them, but everyone but there was like kind of a oh shit, like this planet. is it, like. This and, is a step um, towards that. Yeah, yeah, everyone participated in it. It was done. I don't know the exact speed, but it was done in less than a day. And it takes a lot to liberate a planet. Um, it's just like dangling now, keys in front of people, but it's just yeah, dangling. And mechs. Now mechs are in the game. They're yeah. like, <laughs> there you go. here you go. And yeah, so, that's a really that, cool way of like narratively tying in like how you're going to get this cool thing that people have been wanting. So good. And they didn't do a big PR thing where they're like, oh, let's let's tweet about it for eight weeks and then build up to it and have this big event. They just shadow dropped it and we're like it's happening so this encourages players to like be engaged and want to stay in the game and like be around for when these things happen um because people who participated got a load of currency as well it was like you actively got rewards everyone Mm -hmm. gets the mechs in the game if you play now you can go get a mech but that's such an interesting way of doing it it's amazing they're leaning more into that because before you would have like in wow some of you may not know it, blizzard they would um if, if if a player did something spectacular or a notable person passed away they'd get something in the game that mm-hmm. to commemorate them same thing for csgo same thing for all these other games so now you feel while you're there that you it is alive and you are kind of at any point in time being a part of history so um presence i guess is the other thing like what do developers always if it's live service i think you know their actual presence of feeling like they're there uh, i feel like uh, people tend to get very angry when they feel god has abandoned us god is dead so this game is dead god, <laughs> god, yeah, god has abandoned us yeah god, god, is, god, god has abandoned us if you us, look yes. at all the major like theologies Look what happens when people think God's gone. They make their golden idols. I mean, they make all the other things. They get chained to rocks and eaten by vultures. You know, it's it's not good. So the, I I I think uniformly the idea of players feeling like they have like sort of this agency or like ownership of the story is ultimately is by and large a good thing. Like this is like you said, this is what's going to get people staying around, being able to be like, I was there when this happened, so I felt like I was you know, a, 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 a soldier in this war, like what the game is trying to do. Um, and I know both of you, re- you both are very great at, at sort of speaking for the player and speaking for the everyman. And so I'm going to go against the everyman now. At what point does that become dangerous where people feel like they start to have ownership over the creative decisions of a work of art and that players start getting a sense of entitlement of... I bought your game and or I've played your game for X amount of time. And so I should have input on how this game is made because there's not art like it, like that doesn't exist in other forms of art. I mean, maybe it does. And maybe I'm just not as tuned in, but like people 
don't have that kind of relationship or sense of ownership with movies or TV shows or music or books. Um, whereas it feels like in games, like things are kind of more ingrained, which can lead to some of these scenarios where you get this like genuine sense of entitlement. That's when I think stuff becomes dangerous. Yeah. I'm going to say, where's the line you say? I, I mean, I think in the end, the developer should always have 1000% control and I'll still give feedback, but I'm of the camp of like anyone who gives you feedback is, is they've got the brain rot. No yeah. one else will listen. It's like hitting on the waitress. She has to work there. She's not that into you. Same for the developers. We have to actually actively listen to you. I don't yeah. think at any point in time, it's almost a detriment whenever they say this is for the community, from the community, by the community, because that's how you end up just kind of trapped there, making no one happy because you, you have to acknowledge that there's different kinds of players mm -hmm. and things that others actively enjoy, others will hate. So you're just going to, if you try to make everyone happy, we'll make no one happy. So mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't think a developer should ever owe, um, anyone, anything in that regard. Um, they make it hard on themselves to, to create that separation of like, oh, I give you feedback and I found bugs for you. And yeah, I like it more when it's just like, all you did was buy cosmetics. You don't know anything. Right. Yeah, you're just a you're just a ultimately you're just a customer at this store, and like yeah. if you start acting fool, we can we can tell you get the fuck out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I think there's there's perspectives on this. There's there's multiple, but a lot of it comes down to genre in my eyes. Like I think live service and multiplayer games like MOBAs and and um you know like MMOs, you, there is an element of you do owe your audience something, um and their thoughts should be heard, but this. The two ways I look at it is games can either be viewed as art or they can be viewed as a product. With a product, you have the right to, you know, if your sandwich has shards of glass in it, to take it back and to say, hey, these shards of glass, they're making my experience terrible yeah. and offer that feedback and get things changed. Mm -hmm. You do not walk into an art gallery and demand that Van Gogh changes Starry Night. Yeah, yeah. That is art. It should be that during is, the day. It shouldn't yeah. be at night. <laughs> yeah, right? Oh, you dude, can interpret gosh. it however you want. You can view it however you want. You can experience it however you want. But it is not your decision to have those things changed because it doesn't line up with your viewpoint. Games are art. Anyone who disagrees in the chat, you can leave because you're wrong. Games are an art form. Um, and as players, just because you paid for it does not mean the developers owe you anything and changing it because it is an art form. When we yeah. bleed into, you know, live services, when they're very much more products than they are, you know, an experience that is to be digested, um, I see the argument of, well, you should change these things because it's making it terrible for us. But like, there's different, there's different ways of looking at it, and it's it's not black and white. There's these they cross over. Oh no, and like. We're, that's not saying that oh the artist is always going to be making the right decisions because that's how, there's plenty of bad things of course, yeah. <laughs> those were the decisions of the creators and you're like oh this is how we get madam web oh god uh, you remember the culling Did you i remember do remember the, the culling yeah, yeah. Right, the culling. game that was <laughs> the main dev refused to balance the game or fix any of the annoying parts and he would just mock the community it was the hottest game on twitch for like two weeks and then it died because he's like oh, i'm don't skip leg day. <laughs> I remember there was another game. I, I associate a bunch of these games that like came and went uh, really quickly. There was a game called Firefall. And I remember a thing where the CEO of the company would get liquored up and go into like either Discord or Reddit or on Twitter would field suggestions and then just implement them into the game drunk. And at one point, a player was like, I don't like the PvP mode. And he just fucking removed it. And it just never came back. And he was like clearly drunk at like midnight. And like that is insane. Like that is like that is, is it? Like, oh, it's, his, it's his game, you know. It's it is. Like, it's his. It's it's his game, but it's that is like a, a it, certifiably like, insane uh, way to make art. What do you call it? It's like with Power World, where people go, "Oh, now I don't know if they'll finish the game." I was like, "I wouldn't <laughs> if I made that much money." I was like, "On to the next." No, you would never hear from me again. I guarantee yeah. you, they won't. <laughs> you'd never, yeah. you'd never see me again. Absolutely not. Yeah. See it's ya. um. Yeah, it also, it feels like this is part and parcel with the uh, conversation from a few weeks ago with Xbox when when uh, the news came out that some of their games would be going third party. And, like, Xbox had spent such a long time uh, uh, 
um, sort of cultivating this fan base where it felt like the, 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 the brain rot people on Twitter and on YouTube who are like ride or die fans of a corporation felt like they were like best friends with, you know, Phil Spencer, Aaron Greenberg, like these, these high ranking Xbox executives. Yeah. And they were like, this is it. Like we're a part, we, we have a seat at the table. And then when, Microsoft made a decision that financially makes a lot of sense for Microsoft because they're like, well, these get these games, let's put these on Switch and, and PlayStation and make more money off of them. Those fans were like, how could you? We had a seat at the table. And it's like, well, you didn't. You didn't because like you were, you know, you thought you were buddy buddy with a corporation, but ultimately it's a fucking corporation. Like I don't, as much as I, I love Nintendo and I buy Nintendo shit, I have no qualms that Miyamoto would walk over my dead body. <laughs> He would just he would walk over my dead body for his sweet sweet Pikmin. I'm just saying, um, say, excuse me, Marty son. As he Marty steps up. <laughs> and then he would uh, he would find out I have a GameCube emulator, and he would sue me into a blood. Oh. <laughs> um, but even I guess even speaking of Nintendo, though, that reminded me of there's, Nintendo is doing this weird thing recently where they're just not saying who's developing their games. So this Peach game is coming out um, in like a week, and they have not said who's developing it. Like, if it's internal Nintendo, if it's a second-party partner, who it is. And their official response was, you can wait until you finish the game and see the credits. And I'm like, that's insane. Why? <laughs> like, why? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. And like, And I think they said, like, someone data mined it. And it was like, oh, it's the studio that made, like, Yoshi's Woolly World or whatever. So it's like... Why not just say it's that? Like, that's like a truly insane thing. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Maybe that's a Japanese, like a cultural thing that I'm just, I just don't know where it's like, you shouldn't care who made this thing, but it seems very strange to me. Like, it would have been better PR to have said nothing than to have said that. <laughs> than to have said, yeah, yeah, wait, that's, just that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, are we owed their patience, though? Honestly, I wish more games would just be like, you know, touch grass, get out of my face. <laughs> like, you, what, what are you doing here? Oh, another anime profile picture coming and yelling at me about how my game sucks, but they put in triple digit hours already. Grow up, you know, like, uh, just, a, just a little reality shake, just a little one, you know? Yeah. Because that stripper don't love you, bro. Yeah. It's that stripper don't love you. Um. Yeah, like, I don't know. I also saw some other people saying earlier that, like, um, you know, what developers owe us is a finished game or what developers owe us is uh, a good game or, like, whatever that is. And it's like, I don't think they owe us a good game. Like, that's in the eye of the beholder, right? The finished thing I can see, it is, you know, as someone who who was playing games where what you'd get on the cartridge or the disc was just it. And yeah, yeah. warts and all. If there was a wart in there, then that was going to be there forever. Whereas now you play a game, and when I review a game, any game, I'm not even talking about any specifically, I get a giant list of, hey, the version you're playing is uh, still kind of fucked up, and day one, these things are going to be fixed. And I'm like, that is... Why don't we just delay every game a week, then? <laughs> like, yeah, why? yeah, you guys are making me sound should... crazy. Yeah, it should, or we had to do with it. Like I had an old uncle, and he was always late for everything. And so we just started telling him everything was an hour uh, earlier. There you go. And that's how you get around it. Maybe that's Dang. how you, that's like your daylight savings time thing. Yeah, you daylight savings time, dude. That's amazing. <laughs> so, so they owe you a finished game show. Do they owe you all the content? Because Bellatro does this thing where you can just unlock everything. And uh, I remember that was an old Total Biscuit thing because he was hella pro consumer, um, even against, against to their own detriment sometimes. But he would he would say they bought it, let let them have it all, let them just have it all. I'm like, eh, it, it, this fair. It's um, you know, if I sell you a Little Caesars pizza, what do I care if you put it in your shoes? You know, because it just yeah, it's orthopedic for you. Like, see, so you mean they should have it all? Like, it should just have like almost like a DVD menu where it's like, oh, I, if I want to go to the end of the game, I could just go to the end of the game. Yeah, if you want to turn on God mode, ruin it for yourself, you already paid. You know, yeah. you know what I mean? Like. Especially if it's single enjoy. player, right? Yeah, if it's single player, it affects nobody. Enjoy, just not my yeah. source code. You gotta wait the, for that. It's the looking for raid World of Warcraft issue, right? So raiding in early World of Warcraft was a prestigious, very difficult thing to do. Like you'd need to get, you know, uh, early on forty people, real people, to arrange to do this raid in one um, space, and it was very difficult. And the rewards you would get from it would be very prestigious, reflective rewards. But then, I can't remember, I think it was in Cataclysm, they introduced Looking for Raid, which was um, a Looking for Group mode for raids, which made 
and it was a very easy way of doing raids with random people. It gave lesser rewards, but their, ex their idea was that it would allow every player who bought the expansion the opportunity to at least see the raids. Because before, you could mm. buy an expansion, and if you weren't good enough mm. and dedicated <laughs> enough, you would not see that content. Yeah, yeah. And the argument is, well, is it good to have some content that only the you know, the top 20% of your player base are going to see, or do the people who paid for it deserve to see that stuff? Ooh, and that's a, yeah. that's a tricky question. Then we're back to that sort of like, yeah, any kind of DLC or what about hard games, you know? Like, you didn't you didn't pay to beat it, you're paying for an experience, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, some weird lines. The only uh, sort of dovetailing with that, the the one of the few times I can remember a, a nerf coming for me since i only play single player games was well i guess i only played the elden ring single player was when they they nerfed the horfrost stomp do you guys remember the horfrost stomp yeah, in yeah. elden ring <laughs> it was like one of those like crazy op things in the first few weeks uh and then i think they realized it was op and they they took it out which assu i assume was for pvp um purposes and stuff but that was the first time where i was like oh no i needed this i think this is the only way i, I defeated fucking the the god skin duo in uh crumbling far Missoula. i just like fucking spammed that and i'm like they yeah. took it from me i needed that just just, just put them to sleep you know <laughs> it was so hard they're so hard they're so mean there's one who's very tall and there's one who's very fat and i don't like either classic uh, yeah classic pair a little yeah i could get that though because it was like for pvp as sure. it were, so yeah, yeah well the question is was it pvp or is it like we were looking at for single player experiences is it because it does trivialize a lot of the painstakingly balanced fights that they've made i mean hot take i don't think any of the bosses in elden ring are balanced at all but That's you know deal, they yeah. want it to be a certain way and to take a certain amount you know levels wise right they're like we kind of want people to be around this level have this much experience to try and get into this next tier of content mm -hmm. if a spell can trivialize every single boss sure. in every encounter then that does I, break their game and could make it worse for people so but also makes it better for some so shit i'm of the opinion of no takesies backsies number one and then yeah, so like once it's the, out in the game, you you keep in that. Uh, and then number two, uh, also coming from that time of video games where it's like the game was whatever it was. Sometimes it was broken stuff. And people say um, players will optimize the fun out of their game. But yeah. I don't think players are that good at math, so to speak. And I think um, those things were useful, like the noob tube in Call of Duty, the uh, fireball spam in, in Street Fighter, um, Zergs in, what was it, StarCraft or whatever. Mm -hmm. That strategy that like it helps noobs, so to speak like actually beat the game it is almost their mechanical easy mode so to speak and then if you want to branch out more feel free but i feel like a lot of gamers only have one playthrough in them sometimes sure. not even that and if, yeah. it, if they're gonna play it on the easy mode then you know what have at it you know step step on four skins and toes I'll, I'll step on five skins. That's how. Five that's how serious I'm about with the horror frost yeah. and, and yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, <laughs> the horror frost. I would you never say that was? about you, Frost. <laughs> oh, 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 that horror frost! Like uh, <laughs> they nerfed all the armored core bosses, and that and uh, I get no wait. Yeah, that no, that had nothing to do with PvP. What the boss have to do with it? That's why I still <laughs> boss taking shots. I, I keep my armored core on uh, offline mode because I'm just. I was like, I want to beat them on the. Original you also want to beat it without upgrading your back. You that's like head injury. That's status, different. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's marty head injury status right yeah there. That, that, is, that is something else there but as, as far as like if i had to say what do developers owe us is that i came into this space to see someone else's vision and their passion you know they owe it to themselves to be as passionate as they can without trying to compromise their own vision without trying to like chase the next dollar because that's the thing that people really really want mm -hmm. and that, that can't be put to words no, no one is willing or capable of admitting that we don't know what the hell we're doing. We didn't even know this game would be so special to us before it showed up. So why would you listen to us after the fact? You mm -hmm. know, you're the one driving. You take it. You go for it. Absolutely. But maybe just, you know, don't tell them skill diff online. <laughs> is that too much to ask for? There are certain things where it's like, oh, maybe just like. Send, like text that in your in your group thread or something. <laughs> like, DM me, you know my yes. DMs are open. <laughs> send, send that to your pals. That's whatever. I I always get to argue with Dick about this, where I'm like, if whenever you start feeling the need to publicly dunk on someone, you just got it. You got to create like a group thread, 
and just dunk on that person there. And then you're like, oh, this I feel better. I got my dunking done, and then I didn't have to. I didn't have to get. It, I, it and also, people will tell you you're wrong if if you are wrong, right? Yeah, and then you'll be like, ooh, I totally, <laughs> like, yeah. Mm, this is quite probably good. good. I didn't publicly do this dunking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah um, one or the other. That being said, like I, just, I have a I have a, a, a infinite sympathy for uh, developers and creators and artists. That sympathy starts waning very quickly when you start getting to the publisher level, because that's when I'm like, if you want to be mad mm. at people, they, these are the people you get mad at. Get mad at to the people with the with the monies, the people making the decisions that the developers are like, well, fuck it, I guess yeah. we have to do this, that kind of thing. Um, I'm not saying all publishers are evil, because that's clearly not the case, but. Um, when we're talking about the systemic roots of the the issues we have with a lot of modern games, it feels like um, it's a, it's a step above the developer a lot of times. Yeah, yeah, or or to, it's hard to pinpoint, right? I wish I could just be like it's always these publishers, but uh, I've also seen some devs kind of get into their own heads. That's why mm. um, it is a difficult space to be in in that sense. Well, so like in this instance, publishers will promise whatever. But some developers also overpromise. Do they owe us that at least? Where they're like, "Oh, I hope to have this in the game." You know, is that now an advertisement? Essentially, what was what you just said. shit? What was what, we were talking a few weeks ago about? Was it Dead Cells? Yes. There you uh, go. Yeah. yeah. Wait. What was that all about? I, I have like um, a vague memory. Of- Dead Cells. They're like, "All right, it's finally going to be done." And to everyone else, that looks like crazy that you've been making people the, you've are been, crying been out for, for like six years or whatever yeah yeah like it had to end at some point but they mm-hmm. had promised that it was going to continue that was so a, now it's yeah, like yeah. you did you owe us that because you promised it sure yeah because at first when i first saw that story i'm like how entitled are people if you're getting mad that a game gave you six years or whatever five years however long it's been of of updates and they're stopping now and then you were like well actually they promised this one thing and then they pulled back on it to shift resources to the next project i was like oh okay mm. maybe at that point like yeah. I, I also just think maybe we should, we should we need to stop as a whole just promising things that's what yeah. i'm saying I'd be like anytime we lock a date i'm like don't say the date just just say hey maybe this thing is in the works like keep it vague until that thing is ready to launch yeah. because you don't know what's gonna happen I like think... where where is that line between just yeah. uh, i'm just talking versus you're the guy making it this is false advertising now yeah yeah there's there's two things for me. There's one which is you know on the whole topic of advertisement and stuff like that. The developers and especially publishers have a duty to their players to only advertise things that they're pretty sure are going to be in the you know the product. Mm-hmm. It, it, things can change and they do change. But if it's a major feature and you have been sold on that, right? Not necessarily trailers, but let's say on the Steam page it says there's a mechanic in the game. That's the thing that sold you, and it's not in the game. That's just false advertisement. Yeah, but also part of it, and this comes back to the whole overarching question of you know what do developers owe us? Artistically, nothing. They can make the changes all they want, but if it was intentional or not, that's when things need to change, and it is owed to the community. So again, I'm playing a lot of it, so I'm gonna go give the World of Warcraft example again. There are lots of classes in World of Warcraft. There are lots of different classes in a lot of games. The developer do developers do not intend to balance the game in such a way so that one of these classes is unplayable. They do not intend to do that, but sometimes things, you know, happen. These classes are unplayable. It's a miserable experience for the people who main that class. Those players of that class, I believe, are owed balance changes because they, Blizzard would, didn't, would not intend that, so they are owed that so they can play the game effectively, right? Mm-hmm. But if it was intentional and it pisses off a, f- a load of players, like the balance changes is like the balance changes in um, Hell Divers, I don't think the developers owe anything because that was an intentional change, not an yeah. unintentional one that they needed to balance out or something like that. Sure, sure. I like that. I, I don't know if Ludo was agreeing or disagreeing with you by uh, squeaking that. Probably dis- knowing Ludo, probably disagreeing. What well, are you? Yeah. I mean, technically now it's just. Uh, I assume that these games are as fleeting as ever. Um, if the new uh, TOS is because I read them once every who knows how long now say, well, we can change the game whenever to do whatever. And we might need to. So this game can just not be anything ever one day. Is that like a standardized, almost like boiler, boilerplate? I'm, see- I'm seeing it become more boilerplate. Yeah. Uh, Cyberpunks was the only unique one because, well, their whole thing was unique. Did you, yeah. did you read Cyberpunks TOS? No, Sorry, I don't like, read any of those. Oh, oh come on, Marty. You love reading. <laughs> this it's, game uh, could it's, kill it's you. It's very in character. It's quite nice. 
Yeah. Oh, if it's in character, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the very in character. They TOS get TOS. Brian Co- Emmy winner Brian Cox to voice all the TOSs. If I could listen to Brian Cox, the 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 father from Succession, voice all the terms of services, I would do that. The guy from the Tekken trailer. The, the, yeah, Tekken John Tekken himself. John Tekken. Tekken. Could you? I love that they got him. Like, hey, can you do a Tekken lore recap? I thought he'd be a fighter. Like, oh <laughs> no way! Succession collab. <laughs> it's great. So great. Um, so, so you guys want to jump into uh, jump into super chat? There's a lot of, there's a lot of yeah, super chats, yeah. and I'm sure a lot of this will um, uh, we'll will tie into one. other topics we've had. What, what do you uh, uh, so chat, remember, if this is our, our Super Chat portion, uh, get your Super Chats in. We will read all of them, starting with Steamtastic Vagabond with six ninety nine Canadian dollars. Thank you so much, Steamtastic. I'm just shouting out Shogun Showdown, a banger roguelike that deserves more attention. Flabble knockers. I don't know what Shogun Showdown is. I thought you were shouting out Shogun, the Hulu <laughs> series, and I was going to be like, hell yeah. And then you, you added the word Showdown, and I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is, Frost? You like roguelikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're I'm the roguelike it. guy. <laughs> and I, I've played that one. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, how do you describe it? It is yeah, turn-based combat, but a lot of the emphasis is on moves that move um move you on the tiles. It's like six tiles, and it's all about positioning as oh. much as it's the moves. Yeah, so it's like grapple like this dude, and yeah, the, the aesthetic is is great, but it, it's a lot about just being a, a well-positioned uh, strategic shogun, if you will. Mm. Well, there you go. Learn how to be a shogun. Uh, thank you so much for the donut. Tommy Salty with Tens Woti. Thank you so much, Tommy. Devs OS games made in decent working conditions. Wait a minute. Uh, no, the indie scene help. would be gone. The indie scene would be gone. The problem is, I agree. Also, a lot of our favorite games would be gone. <laughs> I do not I think the working conditions at a lot of my favorite developers are probably good. And a lot of them we don't know about because... Um, a lot of the examples of the communication and stuff we use today were obviously from Western devs because that sort of communication doesn't really exist in a lot of Japanese devs. Like, we got a tweet this weekend from Miyamoto, but it was just, Miyamoto here, there's a new Mario movie in development, please be excited. And that's the communication we get from Miyamoto. I <laughs> like, said yes. <laughs> Miyamoto's not into fucking menchies arguing with people over like whether Nabbit was, was OP in uh, fucking Super Mario Wonder. But... Um, yeah. No, yeah. it's it's not possible. I'm in no way, shape, or form. Do not misconstrue this chat. Am I advocating for crunch? But even without crunch, the normal working hours for game devs are not normal. They're not nine to fives because they're always working on these things all the time. Every game dev I know is obsessed with the project they're working on. It's little, not a normal yeah. job. The little game goblins. They are. Yeah. They, they are little their game room goblins. and they're just. Tick, 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 tick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Balance, balance these. Yeah. Great description. Like, uh, go, go watch some game documentaries. The, the way they talk about their life, working out of garages, you know, five mortgages, three it kids. Is their life. Oh, dear God. Five mortgages and three kids. You got to get three three mortgages and five kids. That's how you do it. Mm-hmm. One, one's a little uh, Shelby. <laughs> Dr. Theo with a $5 dono. Thank you so much, Dr. Theo. One thing I think they should owe us is to be more transparent about everything. I feel like we would be in a better world if everyone communicated. So, you know, I, you... I, 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 I think transparency is good to a degree. Um, and I think transparency is also on a case-by-case basis. Like, um, I would say as, as a media company, we are pretty transparent. Um, you know, and Nick's been showing off those uh, revenue reports and everything. You are seeing literally the money coming in and where it is going. Um, some people have been like, well, I want to see an exact breakdown person by person. And it's like, well, at that point, there's got to be a line for transparency. Like, I'm I not showing you yours. my fucking tax returns. Yeah, that's we'll, what I like. We'll, we'll transparency trade. mirror. Yeah. How much money did you spend on Barich? Transparency last mirror. That's a window, Marty. That is just a window. Transparency <laughs> mirror is a window. Yeah, that is right. That is right. Um, yeah, uh, back and forth. Uh, to me, it's um, uh, from a logistics standpoint. I believe it creates uh, bottlenecking because, like, mm-hmm. hey, this one person said, you know, they want this in the game, and it's, I'm not saying no. Let me go check, and it's like you got to find and hunt down five other people, and then they have to have a big meeting over all this kind of stuff. Some mm-hmm. things you need to be able to operate on the fly, and some things you just like you're gonna have to change them really quickly. And stopping to communicate every point is madness. Imagine yeah. every thought you've ever had just being live tweeted. Some people do that, right? They just look unhinged. So transparency to to a certain degree, you know. 
Shout not out all to the Nick. time. But, <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Nick's not even like that bad if we're talking about those people that are just like Twitter pills. Man, I hate I hate, you know, Stevie Nicks, but this song's pretty all right. I miss her. <laughs> You know, I, think, I want to know Nick's opinions on Stephen Nick. Yeah. Six Steven. minutes, seven minutes, eight minutes. Like, too yeah. much, too much transparency just can invite unneeded outrage as well. Like you can say, "Oh, well, we've decided to change this thing," and suddenly, you know, all of Twitter blows up, and you get a load of negative press. And I know, you know, no press is bad press, you know, and all that bollocks. But it, there's something for holding your cards close to your chest and having a reveal for stuff and you know getting people excited not just through giving them all the information but just waiting to say things yeah. right yeah also, i mean um, there's like uh silk songs a good example of that of where <laughs> i imagine well first yeah. off that started off what that was gonna be a dlc or an expansion that grew yeah, into a full-fledged yeah. sequel and i would imagine team cherry regrets showing it so early i don't yeah, know if that's does. true what what do you think do you, do you yeah i mean todd does probably by showing that logo it's probably good it. for i mean it's probably good for the shareholders right in I'm the like, interview oh. he was like why did we do that we weren't yeah. even making it because now <laughs> everyone, oh, it's even real everyone's yeah. talking about it it's yeah. <laughs> like and nobody every announcement of any you know um game showcase Everyone in the chat is like Silk Song, Silk Song, Silk Song, yeah. Silk Song. Yeah. If they had been revealing every single area and showing all the animations of you know Hornet and all of this, the hype would be nowhere near as as big. And yeah. yes, there are a lot of negatives to that. It's never going to live up to that hype. Hopefully, it does. Um, but that was drummed up because they're showing so little of it. You know. Mm-hmm. Also, I, I, what was it from a pr- sort of protective sort of standpoint? Imagine being like a big brother. Um, to your siblings or even your parents, they didn't tell you everything because it's, you're you're a gamer. You're not a developer. You're not. Yeah. You don't know what these things are like, and not in a like go away. You know nothing. But sort of like this is stress you don't understand, and I don't want it on you mm-hmm. because like why should that be on you? Yeah, you know, especially if I'm about to fix it in like ten minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, hold on, guys, game's about to like crash completely. Oh, I found it. I, I got a save file. We're good. We're, yeah, we're I mean everyone. Everyone who's worked a job, not only in like customer service, but just oh, I, I feel like literally almost any job is like there's certain parts of your job where it's like, well, the other people who don't work here don't need to know how this works. There's parts yeah. of our job where it's like there's behind the scenes stuff. I'm like people do, like as transparent as we are, it's like you don't need to know the you don't need like a minute by minute breakdown of what yeah. all of us are doing because you're here for like what the finished products are like. And then we show you some of the transparency of like on the road to those finished products. And it's the same thing of like. I don't know. Do you need to know what the the inner workings of a hotel are like in order to stay there? Like, no, the customer probably doesn't need to know that. You can develop more empathy with the people if you not. do. If you reach a little bit to, you know, if you've ever worked back of house in a restaurant, you have you, you will immediately empathize with any sort of food service place you go to in the rest of your life because you'd be like, oh, I've, I know what's going on back there. There's there's legitimate hell back there. Yep, you're there for the eggs. You don't really care if Mike showed up again after. Yeah. Oh my god, Mike's high. Night. Mike got high. He was bobbing for apples in the fryer again. Like, <laughs> bad. That was like a nightmare. Uh, race car lock with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, race car lock. In my mind, as a consumer who watches game design stuff, it's like trying to build the Mona Lisa that's also a functional four door sedan with features. I still think it is literally a miracle that any video game gets made. I don't understand. Right. It. It's it, it, it just art, feels art, like fucking like alchemy. Yeah, I just don't get it. How do things appear on the screen? I was writing a few seconds ago. I press play and now I don't get it. Going you know. back to what you said earlier about, you know, oh, the games come in and they there's a message saying, hey, 10 different things are broken here, but they'll be fixed in a week. And you say, well, why don't you just delay it? Or, you know, how is it like this? It's because games are a miracle. Every game you've ever played is barely holding itself together mm-hmm. and is going to break at any point. It, every single game yeah, from indie to AAA, like it's, I love it. it's barely functioning. So they break very easily. It is a miracle. It's straight up a miracle. I yeah. love when, um, what is it? After a, a game gets big out of nowhere, and then they go like, oh, I've never coded before. I don't know how. And then an actual developer goes and looks into the files and like, oh my God, this is just up on rubber bands and duct tape. How did you manage? Like, mm-hmm. I forgot what, what Pirate Software was talking about, Undertale. How he's like, he has, a, I can't, I don't know what coding is, but it's essentially, it's like he has 
layers upon layers of so much stuff for dialogue. Yeah. Yeah, it's all useless and checking in on itself over and over again. And he's like, yeah. But it's ama- It's just a miracle that it, that it came out. I don't Pure know chaos. how. Pure chaos. I don't yeah. get it. I still, I also don't, still don't understand how, how movies work. You just point a camera at a thing and it just yeah. fucking captures the image? How does that it's work? All, it's all how editing. do photos work? It's all editing. <laughs> then people try to explain to me how it works. I was like, none of that makes sense. None of this makes sense. So this is all idea. magic. Uh, Beast March with a $2 dono. Thank you so much, Beast March. Uh, developers owe us the following. Good games. I don't feel like they owe us good games. They mm-hmm. they they owe us their games. And then we'll so see long, if they're good or not. I don't owe them anything. I, it's two way. No yeah. one owes anyone anything, you know. If any, I, don't, I haven't seen a dev get uppity and like you mm-hmm. owe me your money. Actually, I did see one. What a prick! Um, I'm not gonna call him out because we don't need that kind of stuff. But at that point, it's like, all right, I'll buy it, and if it's garbage, you give me the money back. <laughs> this is gonna be a two way street here. Yeah, yeah. I, one of those two way mirrors. <laughs> uh, I saw. I felt bad for. Um, an indie developer who released some game in the last week. It's called like Potions, some Potions, a curious yeah, tale. Talked about how they're like, they spent seven years to release their game. They released it, but the day they released it, EA was like, oh, by the way, a bunch of our old games are on Steam, uh, including it's like Dungeon Keeper, oh, yeah, Man and Conquer Red Alert. They, 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 sim, old Sim City games, they dropped like 10 games on Steam. Yeah, they, and the Potions creator was like, the second they did that, all ten of those games jumped ahead of ours in uh, the like what's new or what's hot or popular new releases or something. New trend so without those EA games, it would be like number five or number six. But with those EA games, it's like almost below the fold. And so like that's one of those things that's like that's a fucking bummer. I don't know what we do with that, you know? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people who are like, oh, sick, like these old like Alpha Centauri and SimCity 3000 are two dollars on Steam. That's great. And then there's other people, and then I get, but I get where they're coming from. Of like, we spent seven years of our life and we got fucked over because of this. This happens random level, event, though, right? Like, yeah, this happened to Titanfall 2. It released in between a Call of Duty and Battlefield One. And yeah, that was EA's fault. That Why did EA game? do that? That was their <laughs> yeah. own hubris there. Yeah, they're like, we have the COD boys, but you don't have the COD name. Oh, God. Yeah. It's, it's all, I well, don't understand it, anything. It wouldn't have been there going to publishers. It wouldn't have been their decision to release it then. It would have been the, public, the, the publishers. And EA would have decided, well, we're, we are releasing Battlefield 1, which is was massive. It was like a huge release. Mm-hmm. And then they were like, I think it was like a week or two weeks later or something, they released Titanfall 2. And it just died. And that being one of the best single player shooter experiences ever Literally made. Ever, yeah. Um, and an amazing multiplayer. And it just got dogged on because it got released then. And I do feel for this indie developer as well. But like, what do you do? Thousands mm. of games are getting released every day. You know, like it's so difficult. You have to just roll the dice if you don't have an insane marketing budget, you know? Yeah, you don't know if you're going to release a game and all of a sudden something like Power World is going to come along and completely, you know like eclipse you uh in terms of of eyeballs so yeah yeah seems terrifying uh alex armstrong with a five dollar dono thank you so much nintendo owes us with more legacy content and allowing fan-made content i know japan's laws differ but they should be nicer to fans especially smash fans so no not smash fans <laughs> not smash fans <laughs> they should be nice to casey. casey's fans. great you should be nice to casey no other smash fans they, they've outlawed um, the way he plays <laughs> yeah yeah, no items. Uh, I do feel, again, without saying like they owe us this, I feel like it should be more important for companies with a legacy to honor that legacy and to like take care of some of the parts of uh, some of the steps in curating this art and like and, and keeping this art alive and, and preserving their history, you know? And that's why you get to a certain point and like, that's when I'm like, oh yeah, absolutely take the gloves off and emulation and piracy is necessary for a game that cannot be legally easily purchased anymore. Like if you're going to abandon your game, then to me that is that is putting it in the high seas and that's that's where other people need to come it's, in. If, it's, if you were... it's in the trash, it's mine. Yeah, I mean a little bit, right? Like it's it's that eclair right at the top. It doesn't look dirty. I can I can have it. Um, <laughs> I'm not emulating, but... I'm preserving. Exactly. And I get like the, the thing with Yuzu um, the other week where, you know, they had to shut down that that um, uh, extremely popular Switch emulator uh, and Nintendo was like, oh, millions of people downloaded Tears of the Kingdom before it was released. 
and part of it was because this emulator is so easy to use. And I think the emulator would have been fine, except that they opened a Patreon. And so it was like, hey, pay us to make this thing that is ultimately going to obviously just be used for piracy. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a, it's a weird thing. Like, I don't I, I absolutely don't pirate new games. I don't pirate the games that are easily accessible on uh, other things. But like when I wanted to play fucking Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, there's no way for me to buy Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes. Download it. That's why the cops are coming for me. Oh, uh, They're on the my, right my legal copy of PT. Yeah, exactly. I, th- I don't even know how to steal PT. If I could. <laughs> I, yeah, if I could. We Let mentioned that you. on the on the, the was it the pod with Darren, where I was like, I, it's not okay to steal from people, but some people are holding things that the, the world. Yeah, needs at to some have. point, it's just Robin Hood, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Somebody somebody buys the Mona Lisa and just puts it in their basement. Are we yeah. justified in stealing it back? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Jack Manson with a $5 dono. Thank you so much. They owe us honest advertising and finished games. I think honest advertising. Yeah. The thing is, is any advertising honest? I feel is like it... Bill. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm in a Bill Clinton. What well, depends on your definition of the word is. <laughs> you do a good Clinton. Like, <laughs> 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 He's a sly one, him, but yeah, what is an honest trailer? Yeah. What is a dishonest one? Um, I did research a while ago because there used to be really rough trailers, especially with like Rob Schneider films and all this other kind of stuff, and even a fake critic uh, saying the game is, or the the movies are amazing, right? And people going, who is this guy? And it turns out Sony just made them up, right? Yeah. And, uh, but they never, nothing came out of it because this was a form of freedom of speech. It was an artistic representation of what my hopes and dreams for my own product were instead of an advertisement for them. So like, what, what can don't you do? Watch there? it yourself. Don't put it out to the public, you twat. You watch it. You don't make me <laughs> buy it you know, with my own eyes. Yeah, yeah. no. So it, it is, again, it's almost like when I see a game that says early access, I go, this could be absolute caca. This could be dead after I've bought it, but I'm still going in paying for that. Uh, with trailers, I go, that could be all lies. Like sucker punch. I yeah. I want to make a show about this. Um, like I I feel like I have this sixth sense for being able to watch a trailer and be like that game's gonna be garbage. And you know part of that's you know me studying and making games for so long. But um I want to do like a react show where we we watch game trailers and we discuss like our thoughts on what it's gonna be and where it's at and stuff like that because I remember seeing No Man's Sky and everyone getting absolutely so excited for it and my my best mate who i live with was like oh my god it's gonna be so good i can't wait and i was like that game's gonna be broken that's gonna be bad just before the only game they made beforehand was joe danger and that is not a game with an infinite universe that is a game where you're a little motorcycle man going left and right like from the size of the team the stuff they've said on conan whatever they were on and and the trailers that those trailers are not representative of what the game's gonna be and he was like nah 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 it's gonna be great it's gonna be great they're doing big things lo and behold you know and huge yeah but then seven years later the game's kind of below oh my god (laughs) only took the better part of a decade after release yeah Yeah. they didn't they didn't say now did they within my lifetime if nothing else you owe me your vision within my lifetime yeah Yeah, there's all i don't know like advertising to me is like i don't know there's like fucking when i was watching the x-files uh i was on it was on one of those weird channels and so the advertising was like really like some some but the, the, these are not the the ads that are airing during the Super Bowl and during the Oscars. These are like bottom of the barrel ads. And it's like if Dan Marino comes on and starts talking about these boner pills that help to give him a boner back, I'm not going to be like, damn, that's got to be real because Dan Marino said he got a boner now. Like mm-hmm. that's not – does anyone get tricked by ad- – does advertising still work on people? Is anyone like, that's what a McDonald's burger actually looks like? I'm going to go get one. Fucking no, it doesn't, obviously. Having knowledge. See, it, it, uh, admittedly, it does because whenever, like, whenever I was looking for a car, right – yeah, I didn't know of any except for the ads I'd watched. So I was like, "How much is a Lincoln?" Because I saw Matthew McConaughey cruising down his. Yeah, you know, I think that's a car. Yeah, um, yeah, a Nissan Skyline, too fast, too furious. That stuff works. It's, I know the I know yeah. the Lexus December to remember event. Yeah. Maybe I want to be a part of this December to remember. Yeah, like whenever you're looking for something that's kind of out of your depths, you you only remember the the ads that you were shown. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely does work. There you go. 
I do Dan like Marino, it. help my boner. Uh, Fox D, thank you so much for the five dollar dono. I give devs my money to reward them for making something worth my money, just like the super chat. Neither they nor you quote owe me anything. It's that's, a very that's, rational. That's a great way response. of looking at it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's money after the fact. Not yeah. I'm giving you money and then return my investment. It's it's you've done something worth the money. Here you go. I don't want it back. Yeah, because I mean, by giving someone money, you're not guaranteeing you're going to enjoy something. Even if you wait for reviews and the reviews are all great and people you know love it, if when you buy a game, there's a chance you're not going to like it. Food. Like there's just, food, food the awesome. same thing. Maybe. Maybe you'll just be like, I don't know if this has cilantro. Shit, I'm one of those five percent of people where it tastes like soap. <laughs> I am yeah. one of those five percent of people. Oh no, oh, that's true. Monsters. Absolute monsters. Ian Alia, uh, Ian Al- uh, Alias. Jesus Christ, that was a hard one for me to say. Ian Alias. $10 donor. Thank you so much, Ian. Uh, when I saw the title, my first thought was about Pacific Drive and how Ironwood put out a news update explaining that uh, why they made the safe system the way it is because of intense fan backlash. I don't actually know about this Who's one. Who's got context on that? I haven't played it yet. Yeah. Uh, I don't Pacific Drive fan Alexa. backlash. Uh, no fan back. Oh, how do I save the game? Uh, da 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 da. Uh, I would like to save my game, but how? If you complete the tutorial, you can save it anytime from the pause menu while in the garage. If you're out on a trip, you'll need to complete your current junction. We go into detail here. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. I don't know if it's something that like, um, it was it was one way at launch, then devs changed it because so many people were complaining that the saves the save system was kind of strange. Yeah, a big thing with rogues is um, um. You save mid run, sure. or do you have to do it all in one? Yeah, window? like that, that's always that's funny because the history behind roguelikes has always been how to handle the saves. But a lot of people would like to just be like, uh, save now and then just come back so I can be exactly where I was, right? Mm-hmm. But I, it turns out that's not how it was. And yeah, yeah. That, that, make, that makes sense. Like, I'm, I'm starting to appreciate that more of being able to just close out mid run, and that's exactly where I'm going to be when I come back. So, yeah, I, I'm happy to say I, I, I'm about 15 hours in the Unicorn Overlord. It's got a hundred save files for us. A hundred. I'm gonna use every one of them. Dude, they're after that second win score. It's oh just my god, game. I love yeah. those save files. What was the download size on that thing? It's about to be like a terabyte. Oh my god, it's just gonna keep getting bigger. My my switch is just gonna get I'm gonna have that switch vent smell. I'm gonna, oh, it's gonna oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, David with a ten dollar dono. Thank you so much, David. Uh, I wonder how much the Helldivers two patch was about objective balance versus uh, about encouraging players to abandon their railgun slash shield slash breaker tunnel vision to actually discover overlooked strengths of other stuff. I mean, I also imagine part yeah. of it is when a developer spent that much. Like, this game was in development for a long fucking time, and a lot of that time was probably spent in their mind thinking that they had balanced the weapons and that players would, you know. In a perfect world, every weapon is viable, so every weapon is getting equal share and love, and that's how you create this this really deep experience. And so I'm sure they were looking at it and being like, well, shit, people are only using this stuff, so how do we how do we move this stuff? And then like Jay said earlier, it's do you try to raise everything to its level or do you lower it to match the other stuff? And that's, I feel like it's, it's a lose-lose proclamation. Some live service you games, players, you know? Yeah. Uh, with some live service games, they'll just churn it. Um, we used to be in a, in a in a time where they would sort of chase optimal balance in a way, uh, but now, it's in lieu of more content or whatever, you can kind of just churn it. If they ever go back on their nerves, that's when you start getting this idea of like, oh, you're just cycling. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like it, it took yeah. me a while after a while, and then actually getting in deeper with some live service site development. Uh, where it is sort of like, yeah, we just have this three-part system of cycling where people feel like, okay, now this changes it up and this changes it up. So we'll see. That's it. not to say that they're doing it now, but it'll take a while. I think part of that is because it works really well in PvP games, not so much in PvE. PvE needs quite objective balance changes. Whereas PvP, so MOBAs, for example, um, you can have a new character be completely ridiculously balance balance wise one it encourages players to want to play them and get back into the game and you know be strong um but also by having imbalance on one character in mobas for example there are counters to those characters so that by de facto means that the counter to those characters get more play um and by keeping them in balance for a short while it gets more play time on those which means people then have to counter the counter and then the meta just gets shifted completely because of the imbalance of one character. And that can be really healthy for the game. Um, and then you bring them down to a normal level. 
and then maybe slightly buff someone else and you completely shift the meta and um people love that shit they say they don't players say they want full balance but you would hate the game if it was perfectly balanced Imagine. yeah i don't even know what that would be if it would be perfectly balanced tetris pong <laughs> pong no because yeah. yeah i guess skill levels uh Alex Armstrong, thank you so much for a five dollar dono. Speaking of listening to complaints, remember that controversy when Blizzard removed a pose of Tracer sticking her bum out because one guy complained. That's what I mean by bad at wording, but they they feel their feels right. What they were getting at sort of is that it was just out of character, right? It's mm -hmm. like with everything else that you've provided so far, this just seems so out of nowhere. I don't know. Maybe she's a little thotty on the side. Yeah, who's to say? Do, are you really owed that sort of consistency? If, you know, she could be super wholesome and, and great, but shows her butt every now and again. Why not? You know, don't be a prude. But Blizzard went. You know what? You're right. Let's go for it. But that I feel like that that Blizzard in general is very community serving, and uh, part of that is why some of their player base feels they're owed so much. Yeah, why well, you get the remember the the when Diablo Immortal was. Uh, revealed and the guy at blizzcon went up and said is this a joke like yeah. that's sort of like you, you sort of empower that kind of yeah like um doll. i worked at I worked at this uh, food line it's kind of like an aldi's and basically they were saying we can't compete with walmart's pricing so you guys have to be nice we have more hospitality here than walmart but they have way better prices and that's kind of blizzard uh their games aren't the best but they've got the polish they've got the community side of things and they always try to put in their player feedback so whose fault is it then that's that's just their reputation i think it's society's fault i'm just gonna blame society on this one yeah let me show a little tushy whenever <laughs> a little tushy for the pushy robo knob the snob with a 20 euro dono holy smokes that's european money uh, all they owe us is artistic integrity. If they had an idea for, I don't know, the story and then change it because of public bash backlash, they're admitting they don't trust or care about their own creation, i.e. Mass Effect FO3? Fallout 3? FO3? Oh, three? I know the Mass Effect thing is obviously the Mass Effect 3, um, right? Didn't they, like, tweak some ending stuff because people were mad? Uh, I suppose. Oh, right. that's like, right. They, they did, like, didn't they? Or were they like they they uh they they went back on some of their decisions in, the, in like the epilogue DLC? Um, I don't remember Fallout Three. I don't I don't remember exactly what yeah. what the deal with that was. If that was just um them changing on user feedback, but I think yeah, I mean that's the problem is like where does uh where does that line exist between like oh these are all good changes, these are all good changes. No, 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 that's a bad change. And ultimately, that's probably where. Everyone's like, well, my ideas are the good ideas. You should change. Yeah. But then if it's not <laughs> one of my ideas, that's not one of the good ones. Don't. There's don't no wedding there. Because, like, who was it? Last of Us 2? They stuck to their creative integrity. And, and then look what mad. happened. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. What, what, what can you do there? Uh, okay. Just, they tweak like, the ending of Fallout 3 to where you can save yourself and Sarah Lyons. Shout out to Sarah Lyons. I don't know who that is, but I like that name. Sarah I just, Lyons. I just don't like the wishy washiness. Like, if you have a bad ending, so be it. If you're going to keep on, like, oh, I actually meant this ending. No, I actually meant this ending. I'm tuning out. Yeah. I don't know. It all feels like some some Snyder Cut bullshit there, where it's like, <laughs> but this was, uh, here's the movie, but, but I got this other version for, for you, so you can't be mad at me. Yeah. Oh, right. Don't worry, Rebel Moon is coming out, but we have the full Rebel Moon coming. It's like, what are we doing? Make Wait, it what, what is this? The only, the only cool time that this was done was with Clue. Because it was a cinematic release, and they had three yes. different endings, and and yeah. you never knew you what you know. got. So you'd be yeah. talking to your friend, and you'd be like, "What are you talking about? No, the murderer was this person, not this person." Which I think is great. Yeah. We need more of that. We need more endings. Games need to have a bunch of different endings we don't even realize, and so we can all just argue with each other. So not just near. That's just near. That is just near. But we don't know. Like we should get to the end of a game we don't realize has multiple endings, and then the two of us start arguing because you're like, "That's not what happened at the end." Like Who's it. to say every game doesn't have that? Fucking take a big old bong grip. Big old bong grip. Fox D with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Fox D. Quote from and by the community, end quote, is how uh, every indie craft them up turns into either Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing. It's lowest common denominator design. Yeah, that is a big I always cheer on the little guy, but some some indies do go in with a sort of like, here, I did this for you. You owe me. I'm owed something, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you, that was kind of the wrong attitude to come in with, unfortunately. Yeah. So. Just, yeah. Just make your silly games, you know? Make them silly. Make them you. They do that's need to make them more that's, silly. That's all you can ever be in this life is you. 
There's a lack of silliness. Yeah. Uh, Alex Armstrong with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much. How about Sega owing us more good Sonic games? They don't because the last one they released, well, not the last one, the one before it, Sonic Frontiers was great. <laughs> They'd have to release a good Sonic game first. They'd have Sonic Frontiers was great. We all agree about it. All of us are like, man, Sonic Frontiers was so neat. Remember when he went through all those sad lands? Ring then did the did the ring thing where he dropped his pocket change? Oh. Yeah, love it. Love it when he drops his, his pocket change. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. A lot of room to run and coins falling out of me. Yeah, exactly. Uh Room to run and coins falling on me. Uh, Jiraijan, uh, thank you so much for being in the Green Gang. I'd argue games are even beyond art. It's great. Uh, beyond uh, art? The uh, vegan alternative? Beyond art. Super art? Beyond the, the vegan alternative to art. Oh, my yeah. God. Because of the That's interactive weird. nature and how it involves like ludic play and how it's a personal experience. I it's deeper it's than art. You know, I think it's just, a, I think it's just art. We don't need to put it above or below mm. my films and my TV programs. Well, as a game designer, I'm all for putting it above TV and film. You know, let's no, go. Movies, give movies me, give, give movies us rule. credit. Movies rule, games rule. Even even Kojima doesn't play that much, so I don't know. I think he's ruled. I I'm cannot playing. imagine Kojima playing a video game. I can't either. Not normally. Yeah. No. I don't no, believe he's played like one. Normal person. No. Probably well, I wonder not. what the last game he's played is, because we know what the last Inside. ten like thousand movies he's seen is. But he he loves Inside. He thinks it's he loves the most Inside. Game. That was the last thing. Like, because <laughs> it's the most game. Uh, and uh, Memorial D with a ten dollar dono. Thank you so much. Oh, Mister Emerald, probably Memorial. Oh, you Memorial. Well, the E should have been capitalized. <laughs> Memorial. Uh, wanted to leave a little thank you, Marty. No idea why, but hearing his writing and presentation on his Dark Souls Two review back in the day when I was thirteen inspired me to write, which is actually now my job. Uh, Mister Emerald, that is incredible. Thank you so much, oh, yeah. man. My Dark Souls That's Two so review. Nice. That might. Be that might be that is literally ten years ago to the day. That is, is March eleventh, twenty fourteen. I was like, man, this is like that was like, yeah, because this is HBD Dark Souls, uh, Dark Souls two is this week, and so yeah, ten years ago today, review Dark Souls two nine out of ten. Get fucked, everyone. I probably wow. was that was probably a little too high if I'm being honest. Yeah, you probably should like absolutely. Yeah, yeah but just like a seven. Yeah, probably. No, I'd be better than a seven. If Life a seven is good, good and an eight then, is great, right. seven is I was good. Listen, I beat Dark Souls 2 fucking pre-release. No help. I didn't know what was going on in that game. Let me tell you, that was a hectic time. That oh, was yeah. a very hectic like, time. When we got Elden Ring, it was, it's Wild West. You're like, what is happening here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Emerald. Uh, Matthew C. Snow, 499 Dono. Thank you so much. I do believe that there's often an issue of a vocal minority. Probably the big, biggest example is Overwatch doing big changes because of the esports. That's another big thing. Is do you cater to the competitive or do you compa- c- like cater to the you know to the casuals? It's iffy when you add money, right? Like yeah, it, when there's money involved in stakes and there's imbalance, you know the the pros do kind of have are warranted in saying hey these things are imbalanced it's ruining the the sport right mm-hmm. and those they do arguably somehow know the games better than the devs in some cases right yeah but that doesn't mean those changes need to be made because a lot of the times when you buff stuff for pros um it will make the game a lot worse for casuals because it can be abused by, you know, the casuals, but the pros, it, it can't, or vice versa, you know. I'm sure you've seen loads of this, Frost. Yeah, yeah. But I was thinking, I just, if Nintendo showed us anything as a casuals first, a competitive is inevitable, you know. It's if competitive will follow. Yeah. yeah, they will follow. If they've got the competitive spirit in them, uh, they'll be there. Even if you're trying to sue them, even if you don't want them there, they will show up. Whereas other games go for esports first and they just die because it's not fun to play. You know what's weird? Speaking of Nintendo and competitive, obviously you've seen competitive Smash, uh, yeah. you've seen competitive uh, Splatoon, speedrunning games. I've never seen competitive Mario Kart. What? I mean, I know, Jay, you just did that video. It's because that game is like bullshit. But like... It's like um, one of the most popular games ever. Like I've never seen in both ways. You can abuse the absolute living hell out of that game. You know, like sandbagging, which has been nerfed. So that's yeah. a interesting thing. Uh, chat if you don't know what sandbagging is, it's when you deliberately hang back in the uh, I think it's the lower three positions to guarantee two extremely powerful items, and then you use them at the beginning of the last lap, which propels you to first place. 
because mm -hmm. your driving skill is actually really good. You're not actually a player who's going to be in last place. Yeah. And you basically automatically win because the game gets you to that point. So I think a lot of the times the game isn't playable in a competitive setting if there are things like that, you know, because not everyone can do it. Yeah, but like there's clearly like when we like when I was playing uh, during during that uh, launch, the second wind launch stream we had, I think you guys were mm. playing like uh, what's what's the secret, secret spy game? What someone's a robot? What's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, first class trouble. First, first class, class trouble. trouble. Yeah. I was playing some uh, some cart on the side, and I just, whoever we were playing with, folks in community, there was like one or two people who were clearly better than everyone else. Mm -hmm. And so it's one of those things where like it's not all random, right? Like no, 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 it's all. There's definitely skill. Oh, it's like yeah. poker. There's definitely yeah. skill. I just want to see twelve like really good people going at it. Uh, Give me twelve dudes in a room going at it. That's all I want. Theirs is more exciting because they know all the skips. Like where all the all the crazy edges yeah, and the skips. bounces. Yeah, like yeah. I, I like to consider myself a relatively good Mario Kart player. I have three stars on every single cup, on every single difficulty. Um, I know life that game. Like, but there are elements where, like, when you're playing at the the highest difficulty, there can be scenarios where the AI, like I spoke about in my video, can just giga fuck you, and there's nothing you can do because the rules of that game, the rules yeah. of engagement, are flawed i mean you but can just that creates fun for the casuals right you can make like a, a shitty casey mode and just turn off items right yeah yeah, yeah you can but <laughs> yeah. when you get down into the mechanics of mario kart um the shitty casey mode isn't that fun because uh it's not that deep no fun for me no that's, fun for that's why you have to keep it separate don't don't integrate the two that was a big issue with a lot of games i find let let there be a way to sterilize the game for people who like that kind of stuff mm-hmm don't don't make it sterilized for everyone. That's, sure, that's sure. Goofy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, shout out to Goofy, one of the one of the greatest sure. characters in Kingdom Hearts history. Uh, Doctor Calx mm -hmm. with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Doctor Calx. It's important to distinguish publishers from developers. Devs' hands are tied, especially with publicly traded publishers. Yeah, I completely agree. That's why I've, it feels like like most things in life. It feels like the people with money are looking down at the people without money and being like, how do we get them to fight amongst themselves so that they forget that the people with money are really the people who are probably the roots of most problems in life? And so yeah. let's just get all the poors to fight each other and get angry at each other while, meanwhile, we're the ones making them poor. Taylor's all this time. Yeah. Like some yeah. devs do you get into their own head with like public expectation. It's a weird headspace to be in. Because like, imagine a publisher telling you, this is what will make your game work. You're trying to listen to as many people as possible saying, oh, this is why I love these other games. And then you just made this Frankenstein, but he's like five foot two. No one wants to talk to him. I love Frankenstein. I think any Frankenstein's great. Any story that's a Frankenstein story, I'm going to watch it. Poor things. It's just like Frankenstein with boning. It's great. Oh, I highly recommend I like it. Oscar winner. Uh, Doran Grossman Naples with a $10 dono. Thank you so much. The devs own the game they make and I own the game I buy. What happens in between? I don't know. Do you own the games you buy? I mean, no. <laughs> legally speaking, no. I am digitally. On, on Steam, you don't. On anything digital, you don't own it. If you read that terms of service, it's not yours. You're paying yeah. for the right to access it at that one time. They can take mm -hmm. it away at any point. Yeah, so it's a big, old, with, it's it's big old amusement park, and maybe the tilt -a world goes away one day. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, there's also there's the you know the thing that to where uh, you don't an artist who creates art and puts it out in the world it's no longer theirs, right? That it's the art then belongs to the masses, belongs to the people. Um, I'd like that in like a that's nice in like a kind of a philosophical sense. That's obviously not how actual monetary ownership works, but um, yeah, I think the digital ownership thing is is definitely uh, that's a that's a whole whole other bag of worms that I'm sure is going to yeah. become bigger and bigger one as we're slowly moving towards a a uh, more and more digital future. Terrified. Yeah. Uh, Jacob Kitty with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Jacob. On games being art, I think they can be, but aren't uh, inherently. Anything derived from creativity is art. So live service or gotcha, for instance, art. But I mean, even live service and gotcha games, <clears throat> there is artistry in destiny there is artistry in genshin impact there is artistry in marvel snap like certain elements might be for commerce but so is product placement in a movie like if a character opens cracks open a can of pepsi in a movie does it immediately become not art you know does define art right that's the the, the root of the problem is define what art is for me this might be wrong but it's anything that 
anything that is designed to make you feel an emotion mm -hmm. that anger you know fear bliss whatever right so a gacha a gacha game is designed to make you feel um exhilarated and happy when you finally get that um you know that role that waifu right mm -hmm. do i agree that they're they're well designed and they're they're good for people to play not really but they are trying to make you feel something and they do make a lot of people feel happiness you know even though they're bleeding them dry for their credit card money but so is it art it's yeah it's such a tough question yeah be standing there for us mm. do you think do you think uh live service games are art or do you think the that once once it becomes Ooh. about the money that it stops being art it's performance art in the way that like you know a live game of charades uh improv all that this is a different kind of art um, yeah in the same way that like i mean you, you're talking to me i, I find food can be art you yeah know? It absolutely is. Uh, all these kinds of disciplines all these kinds of ways that you are trying to uh get people to feel things or empathize with, with something or just get immersed I, I i think so but it's just games are so weird because they just they exist in such an odd space between like it is traditional art it is a product it, it, it can um what is artistic and what is actually just psychological hijacking of the brain, right? Is that mm -hmm. art there? So I'm like, well, like, yeah. what, what can I do? It's hard. It's a difficult. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. Uh, James Degan with a five pound dono. Thank you so much, James. Uh, Indie Dev here. I don't think that an artist owes an audience, but it does pay uh, to listen to their issues, not solutions, as they are ra uh, rarely well informed. Uh, I completely okay. agree with that. Yeah. Well said. Um, then creating a wall around yourself and just going, no, 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 I don't want to hear it, uh, isn't a way to, like, we've seen those successes of, you know, that's that's part of the appeal of early access, right, is being able to bring in that feedback. Like, the the, the reason Hades was was released in 1.0 in a state where it won a bunch of goatees is because it had time to cook in early access and Supergiant had time to, you know, listen to feedback, incorporate the stuff that they thought was would be good for the game and filter out the stuff that they thought would be bad. Yeah, it's free playtesting, right? Yeah, like when exactly. you release your game, it's free playtesting. The audience is going to tell you what they think, and when you playtest the game in development, you know whatever stage you're at, you'll have people, even if they're working in QA, who are kind of misinformed, and the feedback they're giving is just kind of wrong. Mm -hmm. But it pays to listen to it because it might inform you of some flaws that you don't see. Because Frost said it at the beginning, developers historically get stuck in their own heads because they're artists they get obsessed with it and they stop seeing the positives and they stop seeing the negatives right and you need other people's eyes to point you in the right direction but it yeah. doesn't always mean they're right especially if you've been on a project for half a decade the better part right? of a decade like it isn't like the hell divers is a great example i'm sure within the first 48 hours they probably had more quote unquote playtest hours logged in than in the entirety of development just by exactly. virtue of a game that sells a hundred thousand a million copies like mm -hmm. just by virtue of those numbers like you you can't pay for that kind of playtesting beforehand mm -hmm. <laughs> they stress test the servers for them also, yeah <laughs> geez um james Degan. oh james i already read yours i fucked up i'm sorry james you're great uh robo knob back with a 599 euro dono thank you so much by the way thanks for not calling this quote what do publishers owe us end quote or i'd be burning through my salary on super chats right now oh my god we need to change the title let's do another one next week robo knob's <laughs> gonna empty the 401k <laughs> we're just gonna have everything uh early berm with a 20 dollar dono thank you so much hey ludo's dad realistically speaking i want a new dynasty warriors like the old ones from ps2 the new right. releases are buggy lazy messes and have been for years can we kickstart this kind of thing i mean i mean yeah we can dynasty do it. Let's, warriors. Let's some musos it in it does anyone else make musos or is like muso is just one company make all the uh, musos is it koei it was, it was the other one Kind yeah, of... but it, I think it's just like those are all like by the same folks, same right? Oh, yeah. like Rolling Zelda, memory. the Persona one. Yeah. I think it's Koei. Maybe there's some I weird suppose. patent they've got on some mechanical stuff, and that's yeah, like, like as soon as you have a hundred dudes like on your screen, that's ours. So you can't have more than a hundred dudes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what was it? What's that one with the zombies in the mall? What you running them over? With Dead Rising. Yeah. yeah, Dead Rising. A yeah, yeah, that's a mall. So. <laughs> 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 uh, 
James uh, James Degen back again with a 10 pound dono. Thank you so much, James. Uh, folks said to remove my core mechanic, a rear view mirror in a first person shooter because they didn't get it. But when folks play it, they end up digging it. It's called Hell Screen, by the way. Would love for you guys to check it out. I feel like I've seen this looks sick as hell. Number one, I've seen this game before because I've seen the rear view mirror thing. And I remember my first response being hell. Yeah, that's cool. My that's brain. cool as hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Eric, this can you find a trailer and pick it, put it up on screen? I'd love to see some stuff. Yeah, oh, hell, looks, uh, hell screen. screen. This looks like a, this is a good hidden gem. Hidden gem. Uh, candidate. Well, I'll tell. This seems like a this seems like a Jesse game. It looks. Not, looks uh, I'm not trying game. to pigeonhole Jesse Galena, but he likes oh, he likes yeah. these crunchy shooters with their cool colors. Yeah. Oh, but, but that's I'm what can happen then. You get feedback from like some feedback is just I don't want anything of what this game is. I forgot who it was. One dev um, had just finished making their shooting game, and people were constantly giving him feedback to make it more like COD and less like whatever it was. Right? Mm -hmm. They'll they'll just people just want more of what they already know. They don't know the terminology. No one will ever give suggestions to like really move a medium forward or to do something groundbreaking because all they'll be like is like, well, I want it to be like this other thing I like. That's not how anything evolves. Yeah, they just want more. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, James. Also, James, uh, t- hit me up with the code so we can get on our account. Yeah, James, this looks awesome. I wanna, yeah. I wanna play this. Get us that cal- the, get, Hit us on if you're on Discord. DM us on Discord. Let's yeah. Chat. Uh, Humane Shield with a four ninety nine. Don't know. Thank you so much, Humane Shield. Uh, the one Bungie mechanic I like was if you beat Halo on hardcore, you got a special ending. I never did it, but it was a nice bonus for players. I don't mind that. I don't mind having like not like the quote unquote true ending, but like give a little, give a little prize for people who are real fucked up, the ones sick in the head who are going to go through <laughs> yeah. that whole thing on a crazy mode. If Reflect you could do like a no world. death run of like ungrounded mode or whatever of The Last of Us, give them a little something at the end. And it can be as simple as a, a, a an achievement, right? A reflective yeah. award doesn't have to be big. I remember by accident completing um, Bioshock Two without dying, and I got mm. an achievement at the end. And it was like it's called like Brass Balls or something. And I got this year. I was also that, and it was like complete the game without dying. And I was like, I'm a god, right? I'm and it's just from that one achievement. <laughs> Yeah. Like it was probably I was probably playing on easy, right? Sure. Like, I didn't know it was coming and it made me feel great and I still remember it to this day because of that, right? Yeah, yeah. Even, even when you're not having a good time. I was playing the card on veteran and I was just, oh, they just slam your ass in the first mission and immediately within five minutes, here's an achievement for dying fifteen times in a row. I'm like, oh, like, cool. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, I think. I think, I think the purple yeah. donkey is for me. Yeah. Uh, Tsunami Doucher with a $20 dono. Thank you so much. Remember when the first Hi-Fi Rush trailer had the tags from the creator of Okami and Evil Within? That's why I think a dev owes us. Games that are proud enough that they will use them as pedigrees to push future products uh, projects. Oh, sir. Uh, that sounds like uh, must have 10 years of experience and be nine years old. Yeah, I mean, that, that can work when you're Shinji Mikami, who's been, you know, making making bangers and started a studio since the 90s. Um, but, you know, if you're a dev who doesn't have those, that doesn't mean your game's going to be bad. There's a lot of times and, devs come out of nowhere and you're like, like, what the fuck would Undertale have before or Stardew Valley? Or... But also, if I may be mean, some demos during the next fest, they would say, from the creator of blah, 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 blah. And I go look at those games. I'm like, those are ass. I would not say. I don't know what that is. Yeah, like, you yeah. can't. I was like, I would not claim, no, this is not my son. He looks nothing yeah. like me. Like, the, yeah. Be very careful whenever you say, here's my pedigree. It's art again, that. right? Like, <laughs> yeah, you, you would go to the gallery to see the new pieces from an artist you enjoy. And you haven't seen the art before you go to the gallery. But, you know, you know what kind of to expect from that from that description. So you go in and it might not be to your taste, but you know, it's, it might be something sure. completely different. But, but it's, it's like getting to the third, someone's third album. Right. Mm. And before you listen to it, it's like from the creators of the last two, and you listen to like 12 songs and they're horrible. By now you're thinking, you know what? The odds are against you, my friend. You were better off <laughs> not saying your anything. Name. Change your band name. Right? Yeah, <laughs> At this yeah, point, yeah, just, just really something different. You were better off not saying that you were the creator yeah. of anything. There was also, um, the uh that that game uh children of the sun the the devolver game that had a demo at uh yeah yeah, yeah. Fest. i was like cool sniper one like really cool like one of the standout demos in next fest i thought like the game was announced it had a demo and i'm like shit this is on my radar this is one of my most anticipated indies uh the trailer prominently says it's like a, i believe it's a solo dev and it's like from the mind of i think renee rothier and i was like oh who's that and i googled it 
and I just don't, there's just nothing on, I don't know who this person is. Like they, it's not like it's from blank who made inside or it's like blank who worked on this game. I Googled it and it's not that I'm not familiar with their games. I just literally cannot find what else they've worked on. The obsession with Solo Devs. Solo Devs should be shouted out because my God, they do so much. But there seems to be this, like, it is an advertisement to say this is made by one person. So when they oh, so you think it's more of that, it's less about the oh, person and more yeah. of like getting eyes on like, oh shit, this is a solo dev. This is one person. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, like, if you don't like it, it's their fault, not mine. Well, and it's one of those. I'm totally like, I would, especially solo devs. Like, I I want to know the names of more people who make the games I play. I think that's important. To, like, understand the artist behind the art. Um, it was just one of those where I was like, oh, this is a weird like, you know, marketing move when I don't know who this person is it's not like being like from the mind of steven spielberg i was like i just don't know who this is yeah maybe it's the I mean, that's thing. maybe i will learn yeah yeah i mean that's confidence right there yeah, like, yeah. Look, people are gonna know your name they're gonna want to keep that name yeah also it just kind of fit the aesthetic you know yeah yeah no i it was a great trailer i love like my thing was less a uh uh you shouldn't do this and more of i was just kind of confused as yeah. to why the game looks fucking cool though thing. one person made that hell yeah, yeah. uh Alex Armstrong, two dollar dono. Thank you so much. Uh, devs and publishers aren't evil twenty four seven. That's only CEOs. Agreed. Mm. Agreed. Even when they sleep. Uh, Fox D with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much. Give me Doug Cockle reading a terms of service in Geralt's voice. See, I feel like we'd all sit through them if we could listen to our favorite characters do them. Mm-hmm. Well, AI is Maybe... going to get us there. Frost, maybe that's your that's your side gig. Start reading terms of services. Reading terms of services. Release uh, release your own DLC for games to where it could be the Frost cut. I'll get sued too. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't do a Nintendo game and you'll be fine. And so Frost doesn't need to do this, guys. Make sure to check us out on Patreon. We're fully fine. <laughs> <coming. laughs> uh, Robo Knob the Snob, thank you so much for a five ninety nine euro dono. Uh, you know what we're owed? A Deadly Premonition remake followed by James making a two hour essay on it. Have you ever played Deadly Premonition, Jimmy? No, I have not. Um, I I haven't, but I love Beyond Good and Evil, which is basically like a photographer like. So I should probably Deadly Premonition is the one where you take pictures of ghosts, right? Mm-hmm. That's Fatal Frame. No, 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 that's Fatal Frame. Deadly oh, Premonition shit. is like okay, then, uh, wait, which one's Deadly Premonition? Shitty Twin Peaks. Shitty Twin Peaks. <laughs> the sweary one. It's like heavily oh, inspired yeah, by Twin Peaks, yeah, but the yeah, game yeah, is like yeah, janky yeah. and shitty as hell. Okay, no, I was thinking of a different game. Yeah, no, I still haven't played that. Um, but I'm a big fan of Twin Peaks, so maybe I should check it out. And yeah, I'll make a two-hour video essay on it. There you go. It's happening. Uh, SVS Guru with a five-year-old dono. Thank you so much, SVS Guru. I think there's a line between games that are art and games that are product that contain art. Jacent on one end and Suicide Squad on the other. I don't think, I think that's just, that's there. That's a game that's good and a game that's not good. I think that's like a thing, but I don't yeah, know. That's I, don't, I don't care for this. Like, if we're going to say that all games are art, there is bad art. Yeah. You know? Like normal art, but we, that's the problem. Art I is find not it. a good or a bad. Like, yeah. We're giving no baggage to the word art other than it is what it is. Yeah. Except people keep on trying to put this like, oh, at this point, it's just, you know, this drivel. And at this point, mm-hmm. it's caca. It's like, no, it, it's all art. And like um, traditional art, I don't really care for a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Killers of the Flower Moon and Zone of Interest are art as much as Transformers, Rise of the Beasts, and Madam Web. Two of those movies are really well. Three of those movies are pretty good. Transformers: Rise of the Beast was actually pretty good. Oh. Shout out to the beasts. Uh, Robo Knob back with another five ninety nine euro dono. Thank you, Robo Knob. Disagree with SVS Guru regarding mass produced mainstream art is still art. The Transformers, Transformers taking a lot of shots right now. Transformers <laughs> movies don't stop being movies, a form of art because they suck. Hey, Rise of the Beast doesn't suck. Take it back. Um, yeah, I I, I agree with that. I, th- I don't think art makes something good or bad. It's just uh, just, just us saying what the thing is. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jewel Rao with a two euro dono. Thank you so much. I just wanted a new American McGee Alice game. And then EA gave us all the other games oh, instead. Cool. Yeah. Talk about um, art. Talk about art. True art. You can still download that on EA Game Pass? Like I have that. it on my oh, Xbox. Okay. Xbox 360 arcade. Okay. Cool. The, yeah, 360. Still. You can like play it on a modern Xbox. I know. I have it downloaded. Yeah. Well, I have it on my screen. I don't know if I can actually play it, but its button is there. 
uh, Andre, thank you so much for the dono. The problem with Yuzu is that the devs were used stolen slash pirate content to develop the emulator, which is a big no-no when developing an emulator legally. I don't even know how you would make an emulator. Again, we talked about I don't understand how things work. I definitely don't understand how emulators work. I have more confidence that I could program a toaster before yeah. an emulator. <laughs> it's just all French to me. Uh, Gildan with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much, Gildan. The dollar per hour measure doesn't give art its worth, and it's hard to review long games, but it's practical looking at a massive Steam backlog. I mean, I, I'm, I will definitely, if I'm choosing what to play next, I will be like, what if I can get jam through a couple shorties this week? Uh, I'll choose, I'll choose those. I'll choose those. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's all again. Yeah. All right. So, it's hard again. We're back. We're no, back with art, art, baby. It's not again. Katana Zero. I want yeah. an extremely short game, but that game has had an unbelievably lasting um, impact on me. Mm-hmm. I would think it was worth every penny. Some people would think it it wasn't. Yeah. Some people, when they go to look at art, would say, "Well, this wasn't worth the price of admission." Some people, it changes their life. You know. We uh, last week for Hidden Gems, uh, I, Jess and I played through Abzu, and we started Abzu, and then an hour and. 30 minutes later, we just, we're done. And then, uh, we're, like, I was like, stream's not even over yet. I would recommend Abzu 100 out of 100 times. I feel like it's a, a great 90 minute little swim around, a little fuck about with people. Um, it being 90 minutes to me isn't a detriment. Like, that's a, that's a positive to me. It's like a single sitter. I love a single sitter. Yeah. High yeah. replayability, small rounds, Bellatro, like 30 minutes at most. Yeah. Ooh, bro. yeah. I'm there. Absolutely. Yeah, cause it's weird that I wouldn't put myself like it's hard to put myself through y- Yakuza and, and God of War, but I just slammed a hundred hours on a card game over and over. And that's the thing is, as much as I like like those uh, shorter games, like I yeah, I just put a hundred hours in uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I've uh, I think I'm at across the eighty hour mark in Persona Three. Uh, I've already put fifteen in Unicorn Overlord. I feel like I'm going to keep going. So I mean, everything has its place. Nothing has to be... Uh, everything should just be the length it should be. Oh. Billy Zane, Titanic. Um, Alex Armstrong, thank you so much for a $5 dono. Uh, you say that about legacy content and piracy, Marty, but do you know those really orthodox fans who tell you to buy all the old stuff on eBay still exist, right? Yeah, those people have, like, head injuries. Like, that's I do Jack. love... <laughs> that, that is Jack. <laughs> Jack. Yeah, but that's one of those things where, like... I do. I like. I've gotten back into like. I'm. I'm like gearing up my Dreamcast uh, uh, library, and I bought some fucking PS2 and PS3 games this weekend. Um, and I like it, but like, I don't know. At a certain point, like, if it's an ethical thing, it's like, well, it's not ethical. You're just giving money to a dude on eBay. Like, the creator doesn't get any of that money. If you're buying a game you used, like, money. ethics yeah. kind of go out the window there at that point, right? Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows about ethics? I'm not an ethicist. Um, that's a real job, right? Ethicists. Ethicists. Yes. Ethicists. They, they, uh, they put the yeah, jelly in the donut. Sleep, right? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, Itor, thank you so much for the dono. Hey guys, just caught the stream late because uh, of work, but I wanted to congratulate Frost and Jamate for the insightful and thoroughly entertaining work on Cold Take and Design Delve. Ludo for being the strongest and cutest doggo, and Marty for avoiding prison with Yuji Naka. Look at us. Who says I've avoided prison? Maybe that broken that broken door is just a, a it's the the wall door I share with Yuji Naka. It's the rest of your cell, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. For Yuji Naka, hashtag for Yuji Naka. Uh, and thank you so much. That was a very 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 kind word. It was a lovely comment. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, uh, Lady Luminous, been a member for two months, using the green comment to say uh, placebo balancing. Uh, does that mean a lot of balancing is an illusion? Oh, balancing is an illusion to a player. Thanks for all the work you're doing with Second Wind. P- uh, placebo balancing. Yeah, I mean, it's, do we... Perception is stronger than reality, as far as games go. I've said, yeah. I've seen many, many devs say that, where it's just, you have to make them feel like it's balanced, because in the end, you can't teach them that. Uh, before I was in that space, I was a big um, theory crafter for the game, and I constantly would make this, like, this is actually the most broken thing, and pros and, and a bunch of ca- the casual audience would be like, you you have a head injury, what are you doing? And then it would be the most busted thing by the end of it. And it was, and I got to exploit it the entire time because it wasn't a problem. That's the thing. If it's, there's a lot of things in games actually that you, f- you feel aren't broken and they well are, but since no one's complaining, they won't address it because it is a, as much perception as it is actually trying to be balanced. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't know. Like I made Mario Kart, you know, it's not balanced at all. People like it. Yeah. They, they like it. it. 
it's, yeah the perception thing is it's you want to get to a point where your player is playing the game so with a weapon say it's horrifically overpowered you know if the player had found that gun early and that is their baseline experience they will not feel as if the gun is overpowered because they sure. don't have no. uh, so and this can go for like playing different characters in you know mobas and competitive games and stuff like that you need context and so that then bleeds into the balancing patch your seeing that your favorite character is getting nerfed by 10 percent damage wise means nothing to you unless you have context for the rest of the characters or like how it actually functions um and this is one of the reasons why i think like putting direct numbers into your game is really dangerous because players can measure that shit and as fun as that is for the 10 percent of people who do want to measure how much damage they're exactly doing yeah you get scrutinized heavily and you know oh god jay's talking about wow again wow's famous for this you can see the damage numbers of every single person you're playing with if you get add-ons and you know you can directly see it and i think that has a lot of toxicity it allows lots of toxicity towards the devs for not balancing things perfectly you know i think in a lot of ways like with final fantasy 14 they don't have damage numbers or they don't allow add-ons for that and their community is probably a lot happier for it so yeah and I mean, with the placebo effect thing, you have to take into account that so much of games are broken mirrors, like are a magic trick. Um, oh yeah. You know, there was that story that blew up a year or two ago about the, the the I think the guy from Bioware was like, oh yeah, for to make the horse feel fast in Dragon Age, we just added speed lines. Like yeah. when you're on the horse, like you weren't moving any faster, but you thought you were, and no one complained. No one was ever like, wait a minute, I'm not moving any faster on a horse, but you thought you were, and ultimately you swindled things are- me. You yeah, I mean, if these things are magic yeah. tricks and you believe it, then isn't that the important thing? Yeah. Yeah. Um, play games with your heart, not with your brain. Don't do that either. Probably use both. Uh, Alex Armstrong with a $2 dono. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, you, Suzuki, owes us an end to Shenmue. After playing Shenmue 3, uh, I will polite, just politely decline. We don't need, we don't <laughs> need an end to Shenmue. You don't, you don't need. <laughs> I think we're fine. Shenmue 1 can, uh, can just exist in my heart and it'll be fine. Uh, Jewel Rao with a five euro dono. Thank you so much, Jewel. I want Marty's reviews to always contain the no, the number of save slots, how many unicorns there are in, in Overlord as well. Shout out to Bellatro also. I am weak now. Oh no, you've been Bellatro pilled. Gang rise up. Imagine, we're gonna let's measure games by save slots, eh? Yeah, so, unicorn Overload or Overlord 100, Bellatro 3. Yeah, know. yeah. No Fucking knows. Elden Ring one, get the fuck out of here, Elden Ring. Yeah, no, I guess you could roll a new you character. Go, yeah, you get new characters. The Last yeah. Guardian's one. Last Guardian only has continue or start over. Damn. So Last Guardian. Don't a lot of those there. like cinematic games only have one. Get the fuck. Get the fuck out of here, Fumito Oueda. Give me a hundred save files. The second game I'm working on, I can't talk about because it's under NDA, but it does not have saves. There's a hint for what it is. But I will make sure that sure. there is a secret save location my and i will have infinite <laughs> saves i love it i love Just it i love it beautiful so I get a high second win score ten out, ten, yeah 10 out of 10 his whole yeah. poor his whole poor hard drive uh. yeah <laughs> poor poor hard drive. if you, poor, if you poor access drive. that screen your computer explodes <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also bring back the cool little save icons like ps1 and ps2 used to have when you'd save a game like each would have it's like cool little animated yeah, gif little icon the animated thing yeah, yeah that was great and yeah, i love like looking at my memory card and being like oh it's like a history oh, of everything i love going to a save folder and steam and seeing all the little characters about that'd be it's awesome great. it's great uh and urban M, thank you so much for the 25 zwoti great discussion seems like i owe you one urban M, thank you so much no one owes us anything Listen, we appreciate the donos, we appreciate the support, but honestly, you just being here and hanging out means the world to us. Yeah. However, the money is also good because that allows us to eat and and uh, plan picnics. I've been told food is good. Oh, food's great, man! There's some of it that's so good. I'll try, I'll it's try wild. Them. Yeah, I'll try them. Eat it every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. You ever I have, have a calzone? Back. It's like a pizza if someone just fucking it rolled that fucker up. Holy shit. Yeah, it's I'm wild. coming to America. Folded it up on itself. Oh my Calzone. God. Uh, Sky Captain with a file or dono. Thank you so much, Sky Captain. I found Destiny changed too often for me and my friends to play. Every week we had to grind to get back to where we were, so we just stopped playing. And then on to Helldivers too. Yeah, I mean that's the other thing is that's a, you know that's it's a two way street where it's like they make the changes and then you can vote 
not even with your wallet, but like with your time to be like, all right, these yeah. changes are, are too it's much a, for us. It's an interesting thought experiment, right? Like what are players engaging with more if you compare Destiny and Helldivers? Are they engaging more with changing their characters or their characters having an effect on the world, which mm-hmm. gives them things? Like what? Yeah. What's, what's more engaging? At that point, the onus is on the player to decide whether they are the target demographic because yeah, the, these games are just rolling. They're going to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, oh, Queendo won with a $5 dono. Thank you so much. Uh, gamers can be very fickle. I quit Fallout 4 because I went to the primary DJ in the game and he gave me no quests. It was the last straw for me. <laughs> to be fair, if you have a DJ in your game and he's not going to give me a quest, get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. Just get the fuck out of here. Why are you even music? making art? That's not <laughs> art. <laughs> What's no, the most senseless rage quit from you? That's the line. That's oh the my line. god, senseless it. rage quit. As far as like just games, because I think I think it's good to acknowledge that we are irrational beings. Everyone's mm-hmm. got it in them. There's no, no one is very rational. Honestly. Spoke about it last week. Unskippable cutscene at the beginning of the game. Alt F4. Oh, oh god, yeah. yeah me, um, if I'm not wearing the review hat, if you have too much exposition at the start, I was like, I'm done. I don't. I, I, I was. I wanted a game, and I had to read. Be right back. <laughs> Fuck this. I'm playing Bellatrix. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Genuinely. Especially, it's like, what is your game? Like, I was noticing. I was enjoying the gameplay of Berserk Boy, and there was just a lot of talking. I'm like, what are we doing? Like, I don't need Berserk Boy lore. I'm trying to go Berserk. I'm trying to go Berserk. I'm trying to be a Berserk Boy, not some sort of a fucking studio right. Sam. Not a, not a book boy. Not I'm a book reading get gang. These fucking, get get these fucking books out of here. I. You know what? I think we should ban books. Who's with me? Wait, uh, in games only. Just, yeah. uh, just in the games. Oh, no. Oh, so, oh, sorry. I thought, did I go a step too far? Too far. Too far. Uh, CC, thank you so much with a 9.99 dono over on YouTube. Uh, to me, a good definition of art is the difficulty of translating the creative elements from the original media to another medium. This is why video game movies often fail. Difficulty translating. Monster Hunter movie was pretty good. Uh, the Monster Hunter movie was pretty it's good. Very sandy, very dry movie. The diff- the good definition of art is the difficulty of translating from one to another. So I don't I don't know if I agree with that because I mean again I know a lot of people um, uh, have very strong opinions on The Last of Us, especially in a post Last of Us two world. But um, I thought The Last of Us one was a very good game, and I thought The Last of Us television series was a very good television series. So. And and the 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 adaptation just made sense. It felt like a relatively easy thing to adapt. Um, not that making it was easy, but it was one of those things you see and you're like, oh, I can immediately envision what this would look like as a mm-hmm. TV show because a lot of the game plays like a TV show. I get get where they're coming from, but also like there there are flaws in the that kind of way of thinking about art because you know a, a painting cannot be actively transitioned into a book without having new creative elements. Sure. Injected into it and interpretations of the the author. Mm-hmm. So does that mean that that painting isn't art? Because yeah. it cannot be. The, to, to me, that um, I call it specialty or exclusive ex- exclusive art in the way that sort of like PlayStation has exclusive content that you can't get on mm. Xbox. Yeah. I like to play to the strengths of the medium. Mm. I I love but not the best books, but if it's a book where I go, I can't see this being a film. I can't see this being a game. I love those more. Games where I go, this could not have been a book. This could not have been a movie. This only excels in this space. Those are my kind of favorites. Same thing for certain films. And so mm-hmm. that's that's just another tag on to it. Art yeah. to me is is more of a is more of a state of being than any sort of actually any quality. Where it's just like it was made by a human trying to express something. Boom. That is just art. More so, like if good. But then there's good art, bad art. Yeah, a lot mm-hmm. of bad art. There's a there's a very there's a very large amount of bad art. Yeah, to be honest, most art is bad. Art is bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, art is bad. Uh, the piss bandit back. I don't know. Thank you so much, piss bandit, and has stolen our piss. Uh, Ten minutes reading the layman's balance uh, takes on a MOBA subreddit really makes me wish devs stopped communicating so much. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the it's a double edged sword, right? Yeah. Yeah. You don't want them to just go radio silent, but at the same time, it's like is. I don't know. It's almost good though. If you go, if you give them the cold shoulder, they'll get more rabid and more rabid, and any sensible person will start to also ignore them because it's like, oh, they're throwing a fit. I'm just gonna. Yeah. You, you yeah. can't. You can't be transparent. The only thing you can do is gaslight the worst part of your community into being seen as irrational and, and like senseless. Uh, and mm. the, and the devs don't. 
in my experience, the devs that I know are either obsessed with it, like looking at the feedback and wanting to get everything, or they ignore it. And this is why community managers exist, because they're there to sift through that shit. And if there is something that is viable and, oh, we kind of really do need to take this up the ladder and take it to the balance team, they bring that. So then, you know, if you're working on a massive game or MOBA, as a balance, as a balancer, you don't have the time to read through a thousand comments on this mm -hmm. obscure character's, you know, function and stuff like that. So, like, um, <clears throat> does Skull and Bones have a community manager? Do they talk to their community? I hope they not have a for this dev team anymore. I, I don't <laughs> know, but like, if anything, it kind of works. This whole yeah, God is dead feel of this game, and they're just going to do whatever it is. What was, baby? Because every time I keep seeing these people aggressively, like, this game is so bad, oh my god, it offends, and I'm like, it's not, it is, it's just, eh, you, you look a little heated, bud. You know, so it's yeah. kind of, it's kind of good to not have that back and forth in, in their case, except the good old Eve Gielmott, whatever his name is, should have definitely not said the quadruple A thing. Less yeah, transparency, that was, less. That was real dumb. Uh, yeah, I feel I I uh, have so much respect for community managers because, oh, like yeah. like Jay said, not only you're not fielding, it's not just that you're fielding rational feedback, you're also fielding ninety percent of feedback from completely irrational people who then border into just like, oh, you're just like racist and awful, <laughs> like you're getting like death threats to your team and everything, and so that is, uh, I don't that that it's, it's, community managers do not make enough money. It's like customer service. It's just like that. It's hell. It takes a special breed of person to work in that field. Yeah, and then after ten thousand things like that, they snap back once, and it's like, oh, that's unprofessional. How could oh, you? Oh yeah, you you, you just have to be fired. <laughs> you don't even know. Uh, Fox D with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much, Fox D. Breath of the Wild Koroks. Good crazy gamer reward. Find all nine hundred of the Koroks, and you just get a golden piece of shit from Hestu. Really? I like it. That's like the truest Nintendo has ever felt about. Like the people who play their games, it's like, oh, you're really gonna run around and collect 900 of these things? All right, here is your here is your prize. It is a golden piece of shit that has no That's gameplay mean. mechanic I love it. whatsoever. I, I love that. Yeah, the same thing yeah. with sort of uh, Miyazaki, the filmmaker of like, I don't want you to stay in this world. It's about leaving this yeah. world and, and coping with the real world. What is yeah. escapism if you're always here? Yeah. Then where do you escape? Yeah. The good shit. <laughs> You watch the uh, man at his nine to five. That's what you oh, do. Yeah, there you go. Nine to five uh, is my escape. Isn't it? Piss bandit back once again to steal our piss, which is good because I have to pee. Uh, five dollar dono. Uh, forgot to say this, but also R.I.P. Akira Toriyama. Uh, yeah, we we talked about this on Friday, I think, before our uh, Unicorn Overlord stream. But yeah, passing of Akira Toriyama, the famed uh, creator of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, artist behind uh, Chrono Trigger and uh, uh, Doctor Slump and Sadland. Just an absolute icon, like right, like one of the most influential people on on pop culture in my life. Yeah. yeah, seriously. Um, so um, yeah, That's I beat a real one. Dog. Uh, Fox D with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much. Weak, many saves, strong. One save, Iron Man mode. I don't want to be strong. I want to be weak. I want to be fickle. I want to diversify saw, those bonds. You saw the complaints that Hellblade got when they said that. Oh yeah. Gamers, I, you know. Yeah, they don't want that. Gamers don't know what's going on. Gamers be tripping. That's what they say I'd about like, gamers. I'd like to. There should be a game where it's just like once you've played it, or like that's it. It it just it's gone. It, it self disappears. destructs. I would love that. I would love that. No one can ever play it again. Miyamoto, or someone comes to your house and just snaps your disc in half. Damn. Yeah, that'd be real. Uh, Impy with a two euro dono. Thank you so much, Impy. Abzu made me cry from how beautiful it was. Ten out of ten, Impy. It's great. It's the yeah. best swimming in any game ever. Oh, gamer tears! Best yeah. swimming. No way. Best swimming. Tell yeah. me a game with better swimming. Uh, I'd call you a last, fucking liar. Listen, last game what, to make you Mario. cry. Game is, what was it? The last game to make me cry. What game made you cry? Tears. Last game. Oh, Venba. Woo! Called my mom afterwards. That got me because it was it oh. was so niche that one. <laughs> the a game hasn't made me cry in a few years, but I feel like I cried during like. Probably ten games during the pandemic, but I think that was more of a me thing. <laughs> I, know, during, uh, I was like, yeah. "Look how beautiful my island in Animal Crossing is." <laughs> I haven't seen my friends in six months. What were you crying? <laughs> the Avengers? What were you playing? Uh, no, it was uh, Final Fantasy VII remake came out. No. Jesse dying remake uh, was... and uh, Spirit Fair came out. What was the live service game you picked up? The Avengers during the pandemic. Avengers, yeah, just... yeah. 
We put I miss my Avengers. <laughs> Mine was uh, Ori in the Will of the Wisps, the ending Ooh, of that game. That's a Did good one. That's a good one. Sad. Fucking Ori was good. Have you seen anything about No Rest for Their Wicked, uh, Moon Studios' next game? Uh, no. I, yeah, I I love those. I I love those, but I've got a bit of a death of the author thing with the uh, with the Moon with Studios that, with that team. So I gotcha. yeah, I won't go mm. into it, but yeah, I know some things. There you go. Right. Um, crying for that now. Alex Holly, four ninety nine. Don't know. Thank you so much, Alex. Uh, do you think live service devs should share uh, should char change a character one percent a month until uh, where they want it, not tell anyone and get less roadblocks, like death by a thousand cuts, kind of. Uh, I don't know. Well, thing is, gamers don't. They want their games to always be in a state of fluctuation, oh. and so if they can't feel it, they might get blowback. Sure, sure. Even when in the end they're like, "You miserable gits!" Every last one of you, he's actually been buffed by twenty percent in the last twenty months. You just didn't feel it. Yeah, and yeah. Like, well, he needs more. You know, like it is their perception rules reality. So uh, <laughs> they, they will get blowback because it will feel like they've done nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That's a yeah. That's an that's an interesting way to put it. it I'd be I, yeah. I'd be curious to see if there are any games that are just changing things and people just don't realize it. Be like, if I moved something on your desk a little bit every day, how long would it take you to notice that I was fucking up your desk? Was it the um? The Stephen King says true horror is coming home from work and realizing all of your furniture has been moved two inches to the right. Yeah, and be like, wait, is this real or is you this? You would notice yeah. that, right? And that's like, yeah. who did this? Why have you done this? Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah. I know because of all like the mug stains. Yeah, <laughs> there's so mug stains mug... everywhere. <laughs> Stephen yeah. King did it. What's happening? <laughs> Stephen King did it. Uh, that's funny. Um, da, 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 da. thank you so much for the dono. Uh, Jay Ansel with a two pound dono. Thank you so much, Marty. Do you like a burger from McDonald's? Uh, I don't have McDonald's uh, non breakfast very often. I don't. I don't mind. And if I get a burger, I'm not like Big Mackin. I'll get like a. I'll get like two cheeseburgers and I'll get extra pickles and extra onions on them. Oh, then I feel the like I got a good match. Got a. Match. Got a mm-hmm. uh, the one thing I and I probably I have McDonald's probably like once once a year. One thing I do fuck with. I like McDonald's breakfast. I like their hash browns. Mm-hmm. I like a sausage biscuit. I think it's only like two fifty. Nice little combo there. That's not a bad deal. Damn, so, yeah. Like two breakfast burritos for a dollar. Mm. See? Can't fuck with that. Uh, thank you so much, Chance. Oh, Fred E with a four ninety nine dono. Thank you so much, Fred. Uh, live service games should last at least a year or two. Otherwise, what did we buy? I mean, I'm sure they all intend to last a year or two, right? Yeah, that's the problem there is that they're selling on intent. The intent is to last forever. Yeah. Oh, if you've bought a game for sixty dollars and it lasts you a year of gameplay, that you you've got more than enough out of that. Yeah, like I was done with Elden Ring in a month. Yeah. Yeah, like you, you, if you're talking about like how much is a game worth, like oh, every hour of gameplay. I have this argument with people all the time, like because I'm an avid MMO player. People like you pay like nine ninety nine a month to play this game, and I'm like. That's less than a cinema ticket, and I play this game like five hours a night. Yeah, every day. <laughs> like, like Dude, yeah. I get my money's worth from this, and I'm helping support, keep the servers up, get get new content, stuff like that. Like, for me, it makes sense. Like, you're getting your money's worth. I think the conversation of dollar to hour comes up more when the economy's in tatters. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. when we, we when we have money galore, what do we care? You know. Jesus, Ludo, you're going nuts back there. She, yeah, she she doesn't like it because I sit here and I, you know, work on design of all day. Just I'm silent. <laughs> as soon as I start talking, she's like, "Oh my god, it's go time!" Like it's it's time. No, to, this is not. It's sorry, it's, no go time. it's almost go time. Don't worry, Ludo. Yeah. Uh, Just Doc with a ten dollar dono. Thank you so much, Just Doc. Marty Josh Jacobs is a packer. Any thoughts? Also, why would anyone pay Kirk Cousins 180 million dollars? Sorry for being off topic, but I had to share. Just Doc. That literally happened during this. This is big news for me. Uh, if they keep uh, uh, Josh Jacobs and uh, Aaron Jones as a one-two combo, that is crazy. I have to imagine AJ Dillon is gone. Um, but that's a crazy one, one-two combo. Also, I saw that the Bears signed uh, DeAndre Swift, which is also exciting. Uh, get a little Caleb Williams in there. Get a little DeAndre Swift. We got it going. I'm not saying 17-0 and for the Bears. I'm not saying it. However, I'm not not saying 17-0. So and I'm, I'm putting a lot of money on 17-0. All right. I'm saying I'm just, I want to become my goal this year is to become a de- degenerate gambler. But I mean, you got to start somewhere. I, yeah. some, I made some money. I'm going to be honest. I made some money last night in the Oscars. Let me tell you. 
Thank wow. you. Thank you. Praise be to Hayao Miyazaki winning that, winning that beautiful best animated picture. I was like, what was the ROI? <laughs> what was the ROI? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't put a ton of money, just a couple different props and uh, they paid out in the end. So I was in, I was in, I was in the clear. Yeah. Cause I used, I used to do that for the CSGO lounge, but I would always, I was always really decent for it, but I hated that mm-hmm. the payouts were so low for being right. So I was like, all right, I'm only going to show up for the underdog ones that I think are going to win. I'm going to put down everything. Some real sicko shit and then yeah, put a lot yeah. of money in it. Yeah. You've cracked gambling. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's no. exactly. and I made a, And I made a lot, and then they stopped it. I was like, well, there we go. I made like 500 yeah. bucks on that. It was nasty. And I'd, I would just ask friends. I was like, can I have your 18-cent gun skins, <laughs> like the ones you don't want here? <laughs> Come in. I said, Listen, you get off. enough of them, and, and you just wait out, wait out the wave. Yeah. Uh, Lauren with a five dollar dono, thank you so much. Uh, Atlas doesn't owe me anything, but I keep getting Persona therapy. Anyways, between P five R and current playthrough of P three R, four hundred hours of P five R definitely changed my life. The Persona games are so good. I'm getting through more and more Persona three. I'm I'm near the end. I'm 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 at the end of December. Only got a month left in that game, and let me tell you, like it feels like that's the thing. Me hard. Yeah, it feels like that's the perception perception of what's owed to us. It's like I got in here because of some at some point in my life I played some crazy, amazing game that made me go, "Yes, I want this to be my hobby. I want this like to be something I imbibe in constantly." So I consistently want those highs. That's mm-hmm. why so many like middling games that do nothing wrong come off as offensive. Sure, sure. Like I wanted the high, yeah, not meth light. What is this? <laughs> meth light. Uh, so over in Kofi, Just Doc donated. Uh, thank you so much. 13 minutes ago. Thank you so much, uh, Just Doc. Uh, long time, first time. Just wanted to show some love and shout out to Frost for being uh, from Virginia, I think. Marty for getting the idea of Gumby Wing stuck in my head many moons ago. Did I talk about Gumby Wing? Like Gumby Gundam Wing, Wing, but with Gumby? And Jamate for rising up my list of favorite content creators. Uh, Just Doc, thank you so much. Also, Gumby Wing. Not bad. Are you from Virginia, right? One of the Virginias? Yeah, the Western or regular? Yeah. West regular. or regular? Okay. Regular. Is regular better than West? I don't know yeah, anything I, about Virginia. I don't think so. No. no I was you... in the boonies. Rural's a state of mind, so it was, just, <laughs> it was a horrible place. Rural is absolutely a state of mind. Yeah. Uh, Gumby Wing. I love it. Uh, and Jay Ansel for the last message ever in Second Wind history. Uh, with a five pound dono, thank you so much. I read that Mick D's has approximately 2,000 different cows per burger slash patty. Mixing those meats, Marty. I feel like this hasn't contributed much to the topic. 2,000 <laughs> cows for each burger? You it's know what fine. that means? Takes a village. Takes Wait, a village. Takes a village of cows. Jay Ansel, did you, did you post the other Mackies dono? Was that two different Macs? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you just, a, have you just been waiting to drop this knowledge bomb? You're the, <laughs> you guys, you got Mackie's on the mind. Knowledge on these burgers. Oh, I'm gonna. You get got Mackie's on the mind. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Like, as somebody who likes hot dog, I don't know what's going on. Like, hot dogs yeah. have like gym, like uh, gym class mattresses, like yeah, yeah. fucking ground down and put into them, so it doesn't bother me at all. Yeah, they've got like gator hoofs and gym class <laughs> mattresses in theirs. Yeah, Everything. no, I don't mind. Two thousand cows. That just means you got a lot of history in there. I appreciate it. Y'all eating fucking steaks from one cow while I'm here just feeding the village. Hmm. Uh, and six bit with a five pound dono. I lied before when I said it was the last one in, in second win history. Oh, really? uh, six bit with a five pound dono. Thank you so much. As an artist, the best advice I got, it insults the audience to make uh, for collective popularity over artistic vision. Game dev should always risk making bad art. All well said. It could be scary, though. I don't know. There's pop art. You know, there's a lot of things that's just like Doja Cat just came under fire because she made uh, like one or two albums where she was like, I'm just here for the money. And yep. they were top, top of the charts for the whole time. And then she went on Twitter, was like, I hate all my fans. They just eat this garbage. And they were like, we still love you, though. And so, you know. To be honest, I'm starting, I'm starting to be on Team Doja Cat. I'm liking this. Yeah. Well, well done, Doja Cat. Oh, you don't want to be on Team Doja Cat. Okay, never mind. I re- I've renounced my uh, membership to Team Doja Cat. Um, I'm go. sorry to say. Free uh, I, don't know any, I don't know anything about Doja Cat. Yeah, it was a free trial. That's fine. Yeah, but uh, uh, it's, 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 so, it's so weird. One. What do they owe us? Nothing. That's, that's what yeah. we've gleaned from all this. You also, nothing. everything. Everything and, and everything. Just like the James Bond game. Exactly. And their firstborn. Uh, we did it. We made it to the end of a show. I can't believe it. I can't believe we're still awake. I can't believe I haven't pissed myself yet because I've had to go for like the last hour. Uh, <laughs> Jemaine, uh, what do you have going on? What should folks check out 
Uh, what's your mother's maiden name? Uh, my mother's na- maiden name is Crabtree, which is banter. You could have been could have been a Crabtree. I could have been a Crabtree, but oh. it's a bit of a bad name. So apologies to all yeah. Crabtrees out there, including my family. But anyway, uh, I have streams, potential streams in this week. I don't know. They might crop up. They might, may not. Uh, I have you whatever you want, baby. You, you give me a time. I'm, we'll I'm fucking have you play right World now. of Warcraft. Immediately after this, Jay rants about World of Warcraft stream incoming. That's a joke, but maybe. There you go. So, oh, no, you guys uh, are going to yeah, be streaming and, uh, at noon on, on Wednesday. Yes, we are, yes. Lullaby of Life. Yes, the live mm-hmm. stream from me and Marty, uh, me, Marty, me and Frost mm-hmm. on Wednesday. Uh, I have a design delve coming out this Friday on the secret to making any game satisfying. So that should be a spicy one. And then what immediately, what does that mean? Well, I, oh, you'll have to click to find out, bitch. Is it is it umami? Yeah, no, no, it's just salt. Add, it's adding salt. a little bit of mouthfeel to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's salt. Um. <laughs> Yeah, and then immediately afterwards on Sunday, I'll be heading out to GDC. So I'll be away for a week. Um, San Francisco, but, the city yeah. by the bay. So yeah, Old if you're red. in San Francisco, keep an eye out. I'll be walking around being filmed for five days. But If you're in San Francisco yeah. and you hand Jay a sourdough bread bowl full of uh, chowder, he'll he's legally obligated to eat it on the street. Yep. Yeah. All right, we'll do. I'll, yeah. I'll, yeah. If you bring me trailer. chowder, I will eat it, and we will film it, and it will be <laughs> a, a, up on second win. You know what the best thing about a bread bowl is? When you're done, mm. you're just fucking done. There's yeah. nothing there. No clean up. Yeah, yeah that, that final bite's got to be real well, satisfying. What about the fork? No, you don't. Yeah, it's a bread oh, fork. A spoon. <laughs> you're done for. No, you commit. The commit. utensils are made of bread. <laughs> I'm made of bread. I thought we should bake things. Cupcake wrappers, have the cupcake wrapper be edible so that you can eat the whole fucking thing. Like a sugar-based cupcake wrapper. I don't know how that would work. That's not my business. I don't need to deal with that. Just don't money use a wrapper. What? No, just I want to eat the wrapper. Think about it. You can eat the just wrapper. Just eat the wrappers. No, no, don't. Yeah. No, oh, then my edible. poos are going to be weird. Yeah. I am edible, children, but that is then cannibalism. My, my poos are going to be weird. But yeah, uh, that, is, fine, dear. that is me. That's all my stuff. Um, check it out. Hell yeah. Uh, Fungus Finder with a $2 dono. Thanks for this nice beefy stream. Thank you for this nice beefy stream as well. Uh, Frost, what you got going on? Let's see here. A new cold take just dropped on my latest obsession. 100 hours in climbing on that there Bellatro. What's the hype? What's going on? What's this card game? It's Poker 2. Just for you. Go watch that. And that was then, a nice uh, little run. We'll be streaming on Wednesday, as you said. And mm-hmm. then next one after that would probably be Saturday. A little light year frontier. Ooh. Ooh, that's what you think. Because tomorrow, you and I are back at noon. Oh, look at that. What are we With a special guest in his name, Darren Z. Mooney. I don't know what Darren's middle name is. It probably doesn't start with a Z. It's Craig. (laughs) I don't know if there's a lot of Irish names with a Z. Uh, Darren Mooney is joining Frost and I tomorrow at noon central. So the time of this stream, Uh, we'll be playing a game, just a sort of a background. I I think it's probably going to be Goldeneye, if I'm going to be honest. I'm just going to play Goldeneye in the background. But we're just going to talk about We're just going to talk to Darren about movies, about TV. What what has he been watching? What did he think of the Oscars? Is does his middle name start with a Z? There's really no way to know. I should watch Golden Eye before. You, you should wait. We can we oh, should that'll do work. that immediately after this. Yeah, if it's a really good movie. Anything. It's a great movie. So yeah, yeah tune in. Uh, tune in for that, and then uh, I think Nick's going to be back tomorrow. So Nick, we might be doing Firelink. We might be. Nick, Nick might be probably doing not. Because Nick's cursed. He was supposed like, to be back last night, and then uh, he's still not back. So there's really no way of knowing anything that Darren is doing or that Nick is doing. Uh, and then also in terms of streams uh, later uh, this evening, I will be back uh, filling in for Jesse and Casey on uh, Hidden Gems with Jess and uh, at 6 p.m. playing a little Gator game, a delightful game from uh, like a year or two ago uh, that if you like the game, a short hike, this is like that. Um, it's just just a delightful little romp where you play a Gator. And let me tell you, give me more games where I could play as a Gator. They wearing shoes. Uh, He's wearing shoes. Yeah. This is mm-hmm. what you asked? Yeah, is he yeah. wearing shoes? I actually don't know. I just assumed he's like a bipedal gator. He's like a humanoid Ooh. gator. Okay, Crocker, well, then, then even more so, I hope he's wearing shoes if he's bipedal. Yeah, I mean, if he's just like, foot, yeah, if he's barefoot, like running around, barefoot, I don't know, that seems dangerous. No, I draw the line at, but wait, we've got footage. Is he wearing shoes? I, I can't remember. I know he has a hat because he kind of looks like Link. There Does Link is. even wear shoes? Yeah, he's yeah, not, wearing shoes. Shoes. He's not barefoot. wearing shoes. So, devs, if you want me to get interested, I'd say just mod in some shoes. And then, what, are uh, you like the opposite that. of a foot guy? 
Yeah, you know, cover, co- cover up those puppies or I'm not. Cover up I'm, those pups. I'm not coming. Uh, and then, yeah, again, tomorrow. Uh, so that'll be tonight at 6 p.m. And then tomorrow at uh, noon central, Frost, Darren, and I will be jamming through some games and just gabbing. Fucking gabbing about everything. Uh, so once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you to everyone for your for your generous super chats, just for being great uh, in the audience. We always appreciate that. Thank you so much for Eric, as always. Incredible production. Thank you so much, Ludo, for putting up with us for, for well over two hours. We appreciate it. And for uh, Jay and Frost, this was Marty. This was Windbreaker episode number 14. Uh, thank you all so much. And uh, we'll see you later today for uh, Hidden Gems at 6 p.m. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.